In the worst case, someone else is about to get a lot of content. <laughs> I've had uh, bad luck with going to the correct streaming platform these days. Somehow you accidentally started streaming on Mixer, and everyone was like, what the fuck? Oh, how did you bring the website back? I have my ways. Markiplier is just an anagram for Mixer's back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have been spelling that wrong. Mixer? Mixer. Markiplier. If, if that's an anagram <laughs> for that, I've definitely been spelling it wrong. Uh, for 10 years? Yeah, well. You didn't Did you know. forget capital G-A-M-E at the end? Fuck, you know what? You're right. Mm -hmm. Don't forget my lord or Mark's game. What, did, what the... F I just Googled my name because I was trying to see how it was spelled, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... I don't, like I don't know, just like, there was this one article from two hours ago, how Markiplier <laughs> live-streamed his most, quote, unbelievable injury, and I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> when did I do that? <laughs> it was trending Bro. a couple weeks ago that you were dead. That's always trending that I'm dead. Oh. You don't remember streaming that horrific injury you're currently recovering from? Uh... You, know, you, gotta, you gotta get your life in, under, in check, man. Yeah, get under the, control. The unbelievable injury Markiplier went through affected none other than his, quote, tootsies. Which is ironic considering his propensity towards foot-themed humor. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know. What? You're all right, I'm about like, like those feet. I'm gonna go live. I don't want to miss this Markiplier foot content. Okay, so the, in the article, it's when it says foot themed humor. There's a there's a hyperlink, and it goes to this IMDb page of an episode of Unis Honus that is a tale of two tootsies, and that's it. That's my that's my propensity towards foot themed humor. <laughs> MLA format sources cited. I have foot themed humor. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Sounds legit to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I mean, I've I mean. always thought you incorporated a lot of pedi. I almost said pediatric. That's not the thing. <laughs> okay. Podiatry related humor. Yeah, yeah. Pretty but close. uh, pretty close. Please don't do <laughs> pediatric, pediatric humor. humor. Please don't do that. That's I'll not good. Not I'll try. Kindergartners, am I right? This is... <laughs> I'll never forget when we were learning how to do improv and we decided to do pediatric humor. <laughs> is that better or worse than geriatric humor? Oh, uh, way worse. Way worse. Oh, okay. <laughs> so much worse. Yeah. Everyone's agreed. We all, all right. know the truth. Well, we're all live now. I suppose I should do some sort of intro. Mm -hmm. Explaining myself. Yeah. Uh, hello, welcome to a charity stream. There's probably an overlay, there's probably a panel down below, or a command in chat. Uh, we are here raising money for the Winton Woods Educational Foundation. Chat, viewers, gentle viewers. Uh, the Winton Woods Educational Foundation is a nonprofit organization that supports, uh, funds, even, with, um, grants, educational opportunities, for students in the Winton Woods School District, Winton Woods City School District. It is, that is a uh, school district on the north side of Cincinnati, northwest, I think, technically. It's in the suburbs. Um, it is a historically diverse school district. Um, and the Educational Foundation supports a wide range of things. Basically, anything that the district is not going to fund, the Educational Foundation is here for that. They have funded uh, performances from Shakespeare in the Park Company uh, at Winton Wood Schools. They have funded things like students being able to participate in a the version of the stock market game, where uh, you're given you know an amount of money and you have to buy stocks and learn how investing works and learn about interest rates and things. And this it's a it is a great organization that is basically trying to create more immersive more engaging and more enriching educational opportunities for students mm -hmm. they're also currently uh trying to outfit a brand new auditorium 
Uh, they built a new auditorium over the last year, uh, but it's in need of a lot of equipment. Uh, the auditorium is the re rehearsal space for a lot of the school's music ensembles, their orchestra, uh, choir. It's the performance space, obviously, for those same ensembles. They put on a musical every year. There are, you know, stage performances. It's used for assemblies. It's it's sort of a hub of the school. It's the auditorium. If you went to school in a place that had an auditorium, you probably know. You go there all the time for assemblies, pep rallies, whatever. So they're currently trying to outfit it with uh, upgrade and fix some lighting. There are some dark spots on the stage that just currently don't have lighting. Uh, you just don't which... stand in those spots when you're doing yeah. the play. <laughs> you just kind of can't use that part of the stage. Uh, so that's pretty important. They're trying to create, uh, outfit it with a like a communication system. So people up, up in the back who are running things like lights and sound can communicate with people down on the stage. Um, they have one that's very old and apparently completely stopped working uh, in recent times. And they need equipment for like building scenes, tools, uh, hardware. This, I mean, school is expensive, honestly. I, would, I am constantly shocked the more I hear stories about teachers literally paying out of their own pocket for supplies. Teachers who already don't get paid enough, who are already leaving in droves after the last two years of teaching on Zoom and trying to figure out what the hell is going on and trying to manage their own safety as well as the safety of their students during a global pandemic. They're literally spending their own paychecks on markers, paper, uh, folders, whatever their students need because teachers are just trying to give their students the best education they can. And I mean, because they care. I, if, you're, if you're still a teacher, if you went to school and went through everything and saw what it was like and did your student teaching and still became a teacher, it's because you love kids or you care about their education or probably both because the job is hard and it's gotten so much harder. Um, so that's what we're raising money for. Money that goes to the Wynton Woods Educational Foundation will be uh, buying supplies and things for after school activities, enrichment activities, bringing in groups that would otherwise be completely unaffordable or inaccessible. Uh, it's a great organization and, you know, we've probably benefited from similar organizations in our lives. I know I did. Our school had uh, fundraisers and stuff that paid for very cool things that would not have been affordable on a on a school system budget. Mm -hmm. I got to throw this out there, too. This is so random because I didn't even realize this till after Bob had asked us to join today. But my sister is also a teacher there. <laughs> And I didn't know <laughs> that it was the same school <laughs> until like a couple days ago. I was like, I think well, that something sounds very familiar here. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no, I didn't know that at all. I assume she taught in the area where you guys live. You're sort of on like the east, I don't know, whatever. You don't live, you don't live near Wynton Woods. You live elsewhere in Cincinnati. It's a little bit of I a had drive, no idea. yeah, but uh, it's, it's a, such a small world sometimes. Uh, you You pulled that school up and I was like... Huh. Must be one not in Ohio, right? I was like, nope, that's it. No. That's the must one. Be, must be a multiple of them, right? <laughs> no. So, I don't know, cool cool little thing and yeah, everything you're saying, I mean, rings very true from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. Um so, good cause, good school. I mean, you know, kids always need as much support as they can get in schools because uh for some reason teachers in schools were just like, "Ah, someone else will cover it." Gee, yeah, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's usually how it goes with uh, funding education. Someone else will get it, even though it's the responsibility of uh, the community to do so and, you know, the authoritative bodies who decide where the money goes. Hmm. But we're here to make up for their lack of initiative. <laughs> Something like hey, that. well, well, uh, yeah, yeah, they're great job, administrators. But, uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I... I... School funding is a weird thing because yeah. it's not like they don't get any money. Mm -hmm. And and it, also, it's not like they get enough. It's not like schools are like embezzling a bunch of money, like all the all the superintendents are stealing it. Schools could use more funding all around, I'm mm -hmm. I'm sure. But like what who 
people get so up in arms about like, oh, the, my kid's education. What they, they, they're they using old, out of date textbook. Like, yeah, well, who do you think is supposed to pay for that? Yeah, I don't know. I remember it's, you're all like, I don't want to pay any taxes, but I want my kids to have top notch education. Yeah, I remember every time Milford tried to do some kind of a fundraiser or a booster or like any kind of like uh, bill, a government like you know oh, you yeah, vote like on it. levies they and would, stuff school yeah. levy that's what it's called and just every single time every time you know they could put up statistics about like we got like 50 kids crammed in a classroom meant for two and they're they're literally floor to ceiling the the teacher just stands outside the window and screams the lesson in is like no new schools none <laughs> can't have that we won't have that and then just like non-stop why is my kid so dumb what? I don't know. <laughs> Why is my kid so terrible and dumb? I blame <laughs> you. Do you remember whenever they would uh, talk about the different funding and stuff? They needed like, oh, they need supplies. We need this. We have to cut like some after school programs and sports mm -hmm. and stuff. And everyone's like, ah, we don't care. We don't care. And every time that they got so desperate, they're like, all right, no busing. They're like, your kids are. You have to give your kids a ride to school. Kids a ride to school. Take our money. <laughs> <laughs> That's when they would get funding. I have to spend one more something. minute with that little shit. <laughs> <laughs> My mornings are peaceful. <laughs> my morning is my me time. Yeah. Yep, that's how we got funding finally was they were like, guys, look, we're so desperate. We have no money left. The kids are basically just sitting on the floor and eating leftover cockroaches. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't care. <laughs> and you'll have to drive them to school. Drive them to school. Uh, I remember those Dude, cockroaches. Co cockroaches mm -hmm. go stale so fast. Yeah. Leftover I cockroaches know. are yeah, the you worst. You want Monday cockroaches. You don't want Friday cockroaches. They're they're bad by the way. <laughs> cockroach day though. I used to love cock with fresh cockroaches. Nothing mm. wrong with that. I'd see the truck pulling in and I had just a big cockroach on the side of it. And I'd be like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm gonna and, be first and it in saves line. so much on labor. They scurry out of the truck right into the little right into the pot all on their own. It was fun. You, it. you like catch the extras and that was like bonus <laughs> crunch. <you know? laughs> good times, catch, good times. Catch you uh, yeah. Mm. You guys were saying bobbing that. for cockroaches. Ah, oh, that was good. <laughs> That's, that was yeah. That was the the you know the 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 fair every mm -hmm. you know before homecoming they have like the the pep fair thing and it's like you go and and you throw you throw rocks at a wall mm -hmm. you bob for cockroaches and you uh, could paint with your own blood. Yeah. And didn't they call yeah. that life skills or something? Without that the class was called life skills. <laughs> life skills. Uh, school <laughs> is not a place to be learning life skills. Okay, yeah. Wade. Uh, That's why well, we so, only have one class about it ever. Mm. <laughs> uh, so uh, we do. Oh man, I'm already. There's no way we're gonna be able to read everyone's donations. But thank you for the donations. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're already at $1,697 raised. I mean, $1,700. Are they going to keep going up? But yeah. thank you, Izzy Pop, Sally, Heather, Marie, really Brandon. Scary if they went down. <laughs> Dude, if they start going down, I swear. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for donating. Don't forget, you can donate uh, $25 or more. There's an incentive where you can uh, submit a question. We will be doing a Q&A, kind of like we do at like conventions and stuff, at the end of this first segment. Mm -hmm. And we won't be able to answer all the questions necessarily, but we will try to answer as many as possible. Also, you can vote in a poll for a topic that we will cover mm -hmm. during this first portion. This stream is basically going to be like a classic three-peen stream. This first classic. part, we can talk about anything we want. Soldier Boy... S soldier boys cousin <laughs> anything we want soldier boy you want i mean anything soldier boy related that'll fill the two hours until the uh question <laughs> submission locks which actually locks in one hours and 38 minutes so if you want to get your question in donate a minimum of 25 dollars and you can lock it in we are guaranteed to answer it Guaranteed oh, to look oh, at it and decide whether or not we have too many questions to answer. We're going to be here for point. a very long time if it's only 25 and it's guaranteed. Look, it's guaranteed. guaranteed. Our eyeballs will look at it. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the topics you can donate over, uh, I don't have them up because that's a different page. Uh, but one of them is times we got away with breaking the rules, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, Sounds fun, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is, who were your most interesting friends in school? I envision that one kind of like describing our friend group as if it was like the cast of a movie or a TV show. Oh, sure, yeah. 
really pigeonhole your friends you know what's the and the one that's currently winning is what was our favorite school art or science project mm -hmm. could be anything could oh, be after school could be in school yeah, uh, but probably. make sure you get your votes in because art and science project is winning by a wide lead but that can change that could change at any moment I have a fun project I worked on. I hope that one wins. Mm -hmm. I didn't like any of my school projects. I hate school. Yeah, I've got memorable ones. I don't have favorite ones. Oh, I've got like... a, an awkward story and a great project all enrolled <laughs> in one memory. Wow. Enrolled? I guess I've got school in the brain. All rolled up in they're, one. <laughs> they're, they're all enrolled. enrolled for classes in one semester. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. School terms. The poll is at the donation link. The donation link is right below my face down there if you're on desktop. On mobile, I don't know how you get it, but I think it'll be linked in chat by the the delightful moderators. Yes. Who have set up, probably. I think, a command to do it. But I don't probably. know. Probably. Right? Moderators. Yeah, moderators. You set it up, right? Yeah, they did. <laughs> they definitely did. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Or you're going to be in big trouble. All right. So do we talk about a, like a preamble conversation that's not related to those topics? When do yeah, we decide no, we can talk about wins? We can talk about anything. The I figured we'd talk for a while, and at some point I'll close that poll, and there will be a winner, and that maybe will be the last or one of the last things we talk about. Mm -hmm. For now, it's anything we want. Anything we want. All right. Anything. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I got an article. And then it just jumped okay. out of me. He just, uh, just popped out. YouTube influencer who faked his own death reportedly just fell three stories out of balcony. Dang. Yeah. Intentionally or accidentally? Yeah. Is this is this fake too? Is this fake as well? Oh no, yeah. it's serious. God damn. Why would you fake your own death? Number one, and then number two, what situation was he in that he was at a third story balcony to fall out of? I've read horror stories about balconies in general. They are. Well, we, uh, yeah, yeah, we. What? We had what? a classmate who uh, passed away by falling off of. A, I don't know if it was third story, but fell off a balcony. And oh yeah, no, I, yeah. and I'm I'm talking about like balconies just in general. If if they are not built up to code, they are death traps. Like balconies, just like this jutting out. Have you ever seen like a modern apartment complex with like these huge balconies? There's one where. Um, down in this area of LA called Playa Vista, across the street, there's a building, like it's an office building, but the entire top story office juts out maybe like 50 feet. And there's the only supports are like these tiny little, comparatively tiny little steel poles that don't go straight under it. No, because that would not look chic and, and, and sleek. They are like at a 60 degree angle from the adjacent wall. You ever play like Bridge Builder? And you like put support structs that are you know are not going to fly. Yeah, you're playing it for content, not yeah. to build a good bridge. Exactly, and you're like, <laughs> I can't touch attach this to anything else, so it's got to go against the wall that's like all the way on the other side over there. That's what it looks like. I don't trust balconies. I don't like balconies. I don't ever want to touch a balcony. Dude, balconies are terrifying. They I are. I like I'm a I'm a tall person, so I'm I'm pretty high over the handrails, but mm -hmm. like. I've been on a cruise ship before. Those balconies are the most terrifying. Oh my God. Because, and it's built in a way where it's like, you'd have to really try to fall off. The cruise ship balcony is like extra tall. It slants in away from the edge, right? Mm -hmm. So you're like, you're not even close to the edge, but still you just look out and it's like, if you're anywhere up on the cruise ship where the balconies are, you're like 10 stories above the water. Yeah. All that's down there is ocean. Uh -huh. All I can, like, it's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to go out there and lay on a chair and be like, ah, oh, sun, uh -huh. the, the breeze. Rel I'm out there and I'm just like, what if I get drunk and mm -hmm. then I stand up and then a wind blows oh. and then I slip and like, I'm just, my brain is just like, you're, that's the ocean. You're going to go in the ocean. Yeah. My God. These are terrifying, it, man. It's, it's not even just like the ocean because the ocean scares me enough. But I just know that if I fall off any boat, somehow my body is going to be sucked under straight to the propeller and I'm going to be chopped up to bits. Like, oh, absolutely. And a, and a cruise ship, giant propeller. Those things are how big are, are uh, cruise ship propellers? I they're it, huge. like a football field or something. I have no they're, idea. Oh my god! There's there's a picture here of it uh, with a guy. I'm gonna put this in the Discord. You guys can uh, 
put this up uh, wherever you want. Let me see if I can. Holy get this. crap! Yeah, I no, I'm seeing know. the pictures. Yeah, this thing is goddamn humongous. Look at this thing. That's uh, one yeah. dude. Show me a show me a good picture. Just show me that. No, don't open the link. Open the picture. <laughs> open the picture in a new tab. Come on. There we go. Maybe that guy's just really short. It's a normal sized motor. Uh, I mean, I guess. Okay, some of these are way more crazy than the others. Holy. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so what it, what it says if you Google that is twenty feet tall. Which I feel like is hard to conceptualize. Mm -hmm. You you live in a two story house. You're familiar with your house mm -hmm. viewers. Yeah, it's basically as tall as your house. Yeah, probably not quite, but like almost as tall as your house, and it's a circle, so it's as tall as it is wide. Yeah, that's, or vice versa. That's uh, pretty nuts. And there's like sometimes more than one of those on a ship. What is these... one of the things called on a propeller? Like one of the blade. Blades? Blade. That's the blade. word. I was thinking of propies. <laughs> well, how many propies you got on that boat? <laughs> a blade uh, makes more sense. We got one of them eight propy propellers. Ooh, you got an eight propy? Ooh. <laughs> it's a pro 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 the pro 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 Evergreen. Evergreen was pro 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 yeah. What was that called? The Suez Canal Whoopsie Doodles? Yeah, Suez, <laughs> Suez Canal Whoopsie Doodles. And it shall forever be known as the Suez Canal Whoopsie Doodles. If you Google the Suez Canal Whoopsie Doodle, it comes Doodles. right up. <laughs> no. It was the Ever Given. Ever Given. But it was it, on the side, right. the company name was, the, was Evergreen. That yeah. was what was confusing. Okay. That, I believe at the time that was like the third or fourth largest ship, period, ever made. Because those cargo ships are just unbelievably enormous. I think everyone got the context when this crisis happened in 2020, was it? Is it that long ago now? 2020? I, it feels like it was a week ago, man. I have no yeah. idea. But it's just like, it is like that, that one of the excavator digging out like the front of it. And it looks like a toy next to the ship. Like the sense of scale from those things are insane. Just Oh, nuts. Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was 400 meters long, basically four entire football fields long. Mm -hmm. That's a big boat. That's a big boat. That's a very big boat. I wonder how that stacks up to like the super heavy aircraft carriers. Well, there's up. a picture here of it. It says it's almost as tall as the Petronas Towers in Malaysia, which are the two two really big towers that are connected by a bridge where they filmed entrapment mm -hmm. with uh, Sean Connery and, and uh, that lady. Oh, here's a good picture. What's her name? I'm posting it in the, the Discord. Here's a comparison of all that we talked about. A cruise ship is larger than the maybe the USS Enterprise anyway, which is a 341 meter aircraft carrier. Um, and then you've got cargo ships above that. Oil tankers are apparently even bigger than some cargo ships. Great. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. Wait, the U.S. Enterprise is a boat? I feel like I've been lied to. I mean, to call it a boat, to call anything like that a boat, is kind of <laughs> it's kind of diminishing what it really is. It is it more of a raft? That's even more diminishing. <laughs> it's it's uh, <laughs> you're gonna, you, you go join the Navy. So which raft am I gonna be on? <laughs> which of these floaties is mine? <laughs> I like the knock news, or that's not Nevis. The knock Nevis. The knock news, yeah, the knock news. That is... Ersk McKinney Miller. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you're pronouncing O. With do you not pronounce the O? Is the O not supposed to be there? Is that just a mistake? <laughs> the McKinney Miller. I have no idea. Man of Miller. 
<laughs> Muller. I think that was one of my titles for that game series. Oh, wait, dude. Well, I've been on one of these. The Allure yeah. of the Seas. I've been Ooh, on that. You've Is been it on bigger that? than you? I've been on it. It was impressive. That was the one I was basically referencing in my mind when mm. I was talking about the terror of falling off of a balcony on a cruise ship. Mm. If you look at the, the drawing of the Allure of the Seas, you see on the back how it's got a little stinger? Mm-hmm. The little swoopy doo. Yeah, that's a diving platform. No, that back area. There's a big pool, and oh. they have a diving show. Mm. It looks like it's meant to stab people that fall off that balcony and catch them just by stacking them up through. Uh -huh. It's <laughs> that's a people scooper. <laughs> if you yeah. there's a bar up on the top back there, you get swept right off by the wind. But the mm. people scooper keeps you on the boat. Uh. I like the cross on the McKinney on the random cargo box or whatever that is. Mm. There's just a random, like... I think that's Chris? probably, like, the bridge or something. Cristo Redentor? Is that what it's called? Jesus. Chris, the Cristo Redentor? Cristo Redentor? What are you talking yeah. about? I know, that I'm not... Statue, the statue, the Jesus, the big, big statue oh, somewhere. Right. Oh, right. Oh, he's called Mountain Jesus. Mountain oh. Jesus, yeah. You call him Crisco Redentor? Crisco. Not Crisco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like some Crisco Redentor on my toast. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went a little to bit church. of jammy. I went to church last weekend. The pastor put one of them Crisco cross on my forehead. Said it was Crisco <laughs> Redentor. <laughs> you lead a fascinating life, Wade. You guys remember Touchdown Jesus here in Cincinnati? Of course. Yeah, and I was all course. wrong. <laughs> That's like, all what's he called wrong. now? Hug Me Jesus? I forget what the name is. I don't know. It's not as cool. Yeah. Touchdown Butter Jesus was the best. Yeah. Everyone listening, know? chat, audience, esteemed guest, if you've never Googled the Touchdown Jesus before and after the fire where he becomes the Terminator, you need mm -hmm. to look it up. I it's mean, I remember they... thinking that was a prank or something. Because what ha it was a huge statue of Jesus, just mm -hmm. for context. It got struck by a lightning and burned down, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is just a terrifying sight. And seems like a bad, maybe that's a bad sign. Maybe somebody was upset about Touchdown Jesus. Maybe somebody who can control lightning was like, I told you, no icons. Mm -hmm. I made some rules about this. It's weird. That's yeah. a weird thing. That okay. happened while we were in school, didn't it? Yeah, I think, I think so. so. This uh, is at least in college. I think we were at least in college at that point. Mm -hmm. If you are a loyal listener of the original <laughs> Three Peens podcast, I believe we have talked about this at length and the terror that it inspires. Because I remember seeing that for the first time as a kid, and I just look out the window on some road trip, and I'm just like, what, what the, f what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus is watching me! <laughs> because like I've never seen anything like that in my life at that point. So to look out your window and suddenly see this monolithic titan of a Jesus emerging from what looks like a random ass lake, like I might have woken up from a nap at that point. So I thought that I was gonna die. I and, think the uh, yeah. new one's even taller, isn't it? It's like it's some... it's big too. Well, the new one is like a full body situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's holding a book or some sort, mm -hmm. sort of gesturing. His arms are out for the hug, the newer one. But yeah, that was, that was, that uh, touched on Jesus burning down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whew. Yeah, you know, I always love money going towards building more statues that can burn down as opposed to <laughs> school supplies for children that need to learn. Yeah, no, you know mm -hmm. what? That's a great cause. If only there was a way for people watching this to maybe donate directly to some sort of well, that's what educational we're foundation. For, so if what? Only. Uh, yeah, guys, you forgot. <laughs> what? When are we doing that? Now. There's oh my god! It's somewhere. You gotta right. find it. It's like an I Spy book. Where's the donation link? It really is. It really <laughs> is. <laughs> uh. Speaking of things burning down, mm -hmm. uh, religious things burning down even, do you guys remember when that church burned down right on the edge of campus? Were you there for that? I, oh, yeah, yeah. I was in the apartment complex or whatever right next to it, so I got like a bird's oh, eye you were, view. Were you, you were living in like UPA when that happened? Uh, my ex was, and I was over visiting her whenever that was going on. So we like. I was living in UPA when that happened. No, no, you were living in the dorms. That was our first. We, was that the, was that freshman year? That was freshman that was year. Was freshman year that it happened. Yeah. Oh really. damn! Because we both ran out. Yeah, we from, ran over a watch. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Something's burning down. I, you just, I remember it kind of being like that situation where you know the there's a clip 
uh, or of the of Sea of Thieves, and he's like, Captain Luck, and you are going like, Mark Luck. I don't think it was like that, <laughs> but I think you went, oh. <laughs> Well, because we could kind of see like the smoke or the glow or something. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. nighttime, mm -hmm. and uh, we were low on our on our dorm, but we we were up off the ground. Well, we were barely we were, off the ground. We were, no, we were. Were we first floor? We were first, room one twenty one or one eleven or something like. We were right. first floor, but but the way our dorm was, the ground floor was like below ground level because we mm. were at the edge of the the divot that was uc's camp it was a weird thing yeah it was like in a hole in the ground but not on the ground because it was actually above ground level but it was below ground level from the street level a very strange setup it's hard to explain <laughs> yeah but we were there enough to look up and see an ominous fiery glow lighting up the sky uh so that was fun well, here's, it's weird here's being picture. down by UPA now. Did you know they like tore down? I don't know if they tore down, but like there was a gas station, some other stuff across the street. It's like this giant parking garage and stuff there now. I haven't been down there in a few years, but the last time I went, it was totally different. Um, yeah, it is. We anyway. we're like right behind this picture. I found a picture of a uh, his, historic Coryville Church burns down. There's a picture of the the spire being on fire. It's literally taken from the perspective that you and I were there watching from. Oh Mark. no shit! <laughs> it's right on Calhoun. It's like behind the yeah, right on Calhoun, across the street, behind the firemen. Right, like the ladder truck is in front of us, reaching up towards the thing. Uh, I love that. I actually volunteered. My uh, fraternity volunteered in that church like the next year after it was in uh, already kind of destroyed. Uh, we were just volunteering to like help clean out. And some of the guys were like, oh, let's go. Let's go up in the choir loft. Uh, we'll just like goof around. Yeah. And, um, and uh, they did. And it was the caretaker who was sort of helped in charge of getting it back taking care of the place came out and was like get down from there you're gonna die <laughs> apparently when a building is on fire um they flood it with water which makes sense they spray water at it but the entire uh, most of the water from the spires burning the water they sprayed went into the choir loft and it was basically like soft like tear apart with your hands rotted wood mm -hmm. that five college dudes climbed up on and were like jumping around on and the guy was like it's gonna collapse at any moment you gotta come down right now and we were all like oh shit Sorry, sorry. And he's like, it's fine. Let's go clean the basement or something. Uh, something safe. <laughs> you idiots. Demeanor. You're going to die. Let's yeah. go clean the basement or something. <laughs> he, I mean, he hated that job. He did not seem to be having a good time. But also, can you imagine the paperwork if those guys had died up there in the choir loft? He was not trying to do that. Oh, yeah. The paperwork. The paperwork. <laughs> The immense amount of guilt? Nah, it's the paperwork. The, the real guilt silent killer. The guilt do the paperwork. My God. People die all the time. You don't want to do paperwork about it. Oh, it's terrible. It's so yeah. annoying. It is. What? And time consuming, honestly. Oh, I'm like, I'm Google Mapsing around the area, um, and uh, there's a Target there now. What? There's a Target right across from our old dorm. Oh my god, they're rebuilding the dorm, at least on this. Or they're building a new one? What the hell? Tear the old one down. It was a piece of shit. Whoa. I've, I have not been down to University of Cincinnati. Because, like, uh, the last time I went down and I walked around campus, I think it was, like, 2015 or 2016. And at that point, I was I was, I was walking around campus like, oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll come back someday and finish my degree. And now I'm just like, God, no. <laughs> no, never. Never going never, back there. Never going back there. Wait, wait, wait. There's a, the, there's a Raising Cane's chicken on campus? Is there? Mm. That's new. <laughs> that wasn't there when we were there. Maybe I will go back. Mm. Life's not fair. Life's not fair. They, there, look it's at all literally these on Calhoun Street in like the between where it used to be a, an empty a grass lot and a, a foundation where the Taco Bell used to be in the 90s. Uh -huh. Now there's a thing there and Raising Cane's is in there. Oh. Man. Man. It's right, it's like across from from B Dubs. This is garbage. This is <sighs> freaking garbage. Topper's Pizza is still there, bro. You remember mm. how? Wait, Mark, were you ever in on how many free pizzas we got from Toppers? Did you? No. Did you? Did oh, you ever no, hear no, that no. scam? No. <laughs> what did you do? The Topper's Pizza on campus. It yeah. wasn't. I mean, it, we weren't like cheating the system or anything. We just learned a thing that was interesting. Uh, if you ordered 
late enough they mm-hmm. would take orders pretty late right till like yeah. midnight or one or something if you ordered late enough you could get the guy on the phone who was like stoned out of his mind could barely understand what was happening yeah. and all you had to do was order a, a semi-complex order so we would always get like they had one that was like a loaded baked potato right it's like potatoes and bacon and some stuff and we'd be like loaded baked potato pizza uh but no onions and extra sour cream like just add a couple customizations uh-huh. and then it would show up with none of the custom right mm-hmm. it would show up with onions on it and whatever and then you just call and be like oh our pizza showed up but it's got it's got the wrong toppings on it and they'd be like have a free pizza. I don't care. I hate this job. <laughs> and we just had like an unlimited, like it, it was a chain, right? Because then the uh, next time you're like, I have a free pizza on my account if you check. And they're like, yeah, yeah, what do you want? And you do the same order. <laughs> you get the same uh, pizza. And you call again and be like, I think it's the wrong toppings. They're like, hey, you can have a free pizza. That's <laughs> I'm sorry that we messed up your order. Oh, so man. many free pizzas from that place. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> Uh, and everyone was really happy with the guy. He's like, man, you get a lot of orders. They must yeah. really like you. Mm-hmm. You're doing a great job. Here, have some more money. Kyle, everybody likes talking to you. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, I never heard of a guy at pizza place being popular, but... What? I was always asking for you, bro. People are talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> I work at a pizza place? What? Oh, God. I thought that was in my head. I guess I'm drinking so much weed. I was playing this game on this cash register. Fun, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> or it was like eight thousand dollars worth of pizza. Like, dude, I think I got the high score, <laughs> eighty-eight hundred. <laughs> Did you guys ever get to have Will's Pizza up at Miami University? Ah, who would go there? Who wouldn't go to Miami University? Who would Miami. do that? I yeah. was only there. I was there for a semester. Oh, Our friend wow. Jesse oh, yeah, went there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of those guys, huh? Wait, yeah, you guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna screenshot something and send it to you guys because I'm on Google Maps, right? And I'm just like, I'm seeing a, a strange thing. What's <laughs> wrong with this picture that you see? Uh, that's like a forty percent of a football field. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on. Well, there. unfortunately, that's why no. we, our schools in Ohio need better funding. We couldn't have half <laughs> a football field. Hey, also, I, I, uh, <laughs> that's isn't that like a. Is it like a practice field or something? I don't know, maybe, but the way the logo at the top there, you see how it's like broken in half? I don't think that's just like a bench And half covers. of it's on the left side of it? Yeah, I think yeah. something rendered incorrectly. Also, yeah, that's definitely not Nippert. Yeah, that's that's a little strange. Hang on, I wanna, I wanna pull this up. Yeah, what's going on here? Huh. Uh, how do I get the, how do I get the satellite view? There uh, we go. It should be in the layers. Bottom left. I Isn't think. the practice facility on the very bottom of that image? Yeah. The, bu- isn't the, the bubble. bubble. All right, here you go. My stream. I'll pull it up for you. What Mark is seeing is this. Yeah, the logo is real. That ain't. That ain't. Quite I'm pretty right. sure half of the logo floats in the air on the left side <laughs> of the. I, mean, I think that is a practice. I think the bubble is a full size field uh-huh. practice f- situation, and then that's like a half practice fields but i don't understand what's happening oh I is it literally in. like logo f- removed from the football field or something just laying over that area yeah so that's like fake turf because i see if i zoom in on it there's a little flap in the corner still very strange to see yeah, that's on. weird looking <laughs> i don't remember that half stadium being there no well none of that was there when we were in school that was all built like I don't know. A couple of years after we left, well, the football program was only—it only was good like while we were there. It wasn't good prior to us being there. So I think a lot of improvements happened like either during or after our tenure. It looks like they Dude, removed the Dude, Sheekly Lawn. Sheekly Lawn. Oh, Sheekly Lawn. That's where they used to play Quidditch. You guys remember the Quidditch club at UC? No, I don't remember the Quidditch club. Yeah, that's what? where they used to play. That's where they used to play Quidditch matches on Sheekly Lawn. What? I know that was a thing. Have you never seen? Yeah, you did know that Wayne? No, I did not. Oh. Have you guys ever seen Quidditch? I, uh, I human have, Quidditch. I, Harry Potter. A long time ago, I was like a guest on some video where they played Quidditch and they just like, I don't know, they they played Quidditch. They were better what do than you me. Ride around on like you, a you pogo put stick you or put something? a broomstick between your legs uh-huh. in a very dangerous position for men, uh-huh. and then you run around. And the snitch is not a f- magical flying ball. The snitch is a human person. I saw a and, snitch get beat with broomsticks once. <laughs> that, that probably did happen to you. That, that seems like a different thing, but oh, okay. 
Hey, look, where's here's the building that Mark jumped off of and almost killed himself on. Yeah, oh, there it is. I could probably pinpoint exactly where it was. <laughs> There's still <laughs> chalk on the ground to this day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a historic mark now. There's a chalk outline and a, a little placard that reads, Here yeah. lied Markiplier. Oh, wait, where's the guy he that lived. died? Here, actually, if I take the a... The guy who died. Yeah, what parking garage shot, was that? I can, it was uh, the one right next to Depp. Was whatever it that Clifton one. Court Garage? Yeah, Clifton Court Garage. I can actually show you exactly our path of destruction. Let me take this screenshot. I can see it. I think I can see where paint. it was. I'm going to put it in paint here let's prop this in it. let's get my brush out okay so i'm drawing the first body was right outside the garage and this is where my ass got broke so or my spine rather ow that's a buttocks uh it doesn't look like it else okay anyway and so our path of destruction we lost one guy there i believe we came around the back side here i remember climbing up here going across here and then i believe we dropped back down here and i pulled up is... your stream hoping to see this all i no, see no, is no, your I, face i, so I know not... I'm, i know i'm drawing it so okay, that i can okay. save it later and okay. then i'll show it in a second um, and then this is where I've hidden the buried treasure. Okay, so I'm saving this in pictures, uh, Path of Destruction. Which garage was it called? Uh, Clifton Court. Clifton um, Court. Okay, so I, I parked at University that. Avenue Garage. Where's Clifton Court? It's uh, the one right next to Dap. Yeah, uh, I saved it, I thought. Save path of destruction it's university avenue did that used to be called green or is that a different one because i thought it i might have i don't remember it being called university avenue that I, be a new I swear i parked in green garage and i swear it was way on that corner of campus because my my dorm was the opposite corner yeah. okay yeah so yeah because if you parked there you had to walk by like all the cool little grass things <laughs> i don't know how else to describe it like the oh my god mark drew a hole all right let me pull this yeah. up for listen for listeners of Distractable, this is where it all went wrong. We lost the first guy where the body outline is, and then we parkoured very stylishly through the red line, up the building to the roof, heard sirens came off, and landed, I think, there. I'd have to be there to confirm, but that makes sense because I don't believe that we wandered elsewhere. I don't know. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense to me. That's, that's kind of what I figured. Yeah, yeah. So for my viewers... This is the start. Dead guy disappeared. Never seen again. Never seen. Again. I like the arrow pointing around. at the guy's butthole. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. That's where it was. That's where his ass landed. <laughs> Do you still have that outfit, Mark? Just curious. No, I. It's like a. It, that was like a hodgepodge of random bits of clothing that I've probably not seen. It was a pretty good. Guy? It was a pretty good outfit. <laughs> What'd you think? <laughs> Do you still have that dead guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, oddly enough. <laughs> Lost it in a move, you know? I can track, track things, but... Yeah. I shouldn't joke about that, but it made me laugh, so I did. Whoops. Mm. Oh, well, man, I've got so much nostalgia and hatred for some of the landmarks I'm seeing that I remember. Mm. What, what do you... What, describe some, Wayne. Hate. Give us, give us so, the story. Okay. So I remember having to walk from the garage all the way up past uh, the Tangemin Center. And there's a lot of like, you can't really see it on this map, but it's kind of like an upward slope. And I had to have three tailbone surgeries in college. I remember carrying my butt pillow, trying to walk up this fucking hill mm -hmm. in the winter mm -hmm. on snow and ice. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's that? commiserating with you or oh, something. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Bird begging for food. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of my classes were up in the College of Arts and Sciences building. I don't know, McMicken? Is that what it was called? McMicken. Yeah, that's like the main building, McMicken yeah. Hall. So I had to go up there for a lot of classes. So I always had to walk all the way across campus up the goddamn hill with my broken ass. That's hilarious. I had a very. Uh, life is a movie moment in front of Mick Mick in one time I was I was it was freshman year I was like late to a class it was maybe mm -hmm. public speaking or something like that where I had to like give up I did give a presentation basically so I'm wearing like my one pair of nice khakis and uh and a, a button-down shirt and I'm like in a big hurry trying to rush across campus and I literally was walking through the Mick Mick and Commons and cut a corner you know those 
sidewalks are all at weird angles. I was trying to like take a shortcut. I took one step off the sidewalk, rolled my ankle, ate shit into a huge puddle of mud, <laughs> and like not like oh no my knee. I fell like and rolled and was coated in mud. Excellent. And then had to rush off and give a presentation coated in mud. And, and nobody was laughing or thought it was hilarious. They were all very nice and adult about it. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. That is very good. Yeah, one of the, the cool underrated things about UC is I know a lot of our audience doesn't care about football, but like if you did, and we, when we were there, UC was really like they're good right now, but they were really good then for like the first time ever. But you could grab lunch over at the Tangerman Center and literally just walk over and eat at the stadium you could just freely walk in there run around the field or sit on the bleachers and eat like it was really cool yeah you could literally people would like work out running up and down the stands or work out on the field if there wasn't a team like practicing mm -hmm. it was fully open it was pretty cool i never worked out in college but but you could you could yeah i remember every time i tried to work out post my uh parkour debacle I would get lightheaded and pass out in the bathroom. You would almost die again? I would almost die every single time. Every time I did a back exercise, I remember, huh, it's weird that I'm feeling really woozy and have to lay down on the floor for an hour. <laughs> That's so weird. I can't believe that that happened to you. Yeah, very strange. Oh, What well. happens if you do street view in campus? Are there images of <laughs> campus? I don't know. Some oh, probably. wow. I see the construction that you're talking oh, about. Oh, God. This picture is from 2007. This is legitimately what? when I, I would have been <gasps> Oh, that's been right. Going. You can change it. Oh, weird. Oh, that's September 2007. That is Holy literally... Shit. We are in that picture in that building. Somewhere there, we are literally there. That literally right here on the first floor of this building... That's our crazy. our dorm room we are in there yeah look there's a i don't remember this building being here in 2007 are you sure google <laughs> across the street from sedol wasn't that an empty foundation when we went to school was I that really know. a building i have no idea that's cool i forgot you could change the time yeah i know right oh going uh... back in time when it's cameras all had a yellowy... It happened to be being viewed while we reminisce about the Listen, good old days. Isn't that most of our lives? Oh my god, yeah, look at all this probably. stuff that's here now. Look at how look how it's changed. Oh, uh, look how it's changed. Oh god, that there's something called the Mac me. Shack. The Mac... Oh god. god. What is the Mac Shack? I don't know, but it's right across from Sadal, and I assume I would have been there quite a bit. You mm -hmm. get Mac and cheese and then fuck? Well... Mm. Oh my god, there's an Amazon yeah, store. Experience. What the hell is going on over here? What Does Amazon have stores? Yeah, they got stores. You didn't know about Amazon stores? No. Oh my god, let me tell you about Amazon stores. They are super weird. I don't know if they're still as much of a thing as they were before, but they tried to do this thing where uh, if you walk in the store, you don't have to check out. You don't have to do anything except grab the item and walk out with it. And because there are so many cameras in the store watching your every move recognizing your face knowing that your face is tied to your amazon account they will automatically charge you for anything that you walk out of the store with that was the idea behind it i've been in one once it is as scary as it sounds that sounds that sounds cool but also I, w I feel like I would never feel comfortable walking out of that. Like, no, I've, yeah. that goes against everything you learn. You're going to a store, grab some stuff, and just leave without even talking to someone and just be like, uh -huh. this is mine now. Yeah. Uh, right next to the B dubs that we spent many, many a day at, many a there's moon. a store called the French Fry Heaven, which is just oh permanently closed. <laughs> sad. I uh, guess it wasn't sad. that good, huh? I don't I see Five not. Guys. Did Five Guys close down there? Uh, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. I oh think. yeah, yeah, yeah. The French Fry Heaven store is where Five Guys used to be, right? Oh, I don't I even think remember so. the Five Guys. That GameStop on Calhoun. Oh, guys. I do, I do, I do, I do. That GameStop on Calhoun. I remember waiting for one of the Call of Duties to come out, and we were there was like a long line of people for the midnight release, and people that were living in fucking Calhoun had their windows open, pouring buckets of water on us as we waited. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> it was like freezing cold they were just dunking water on us <laughs> uh, that's dude i tried to i put in so many job applications at that gamestop store yeah 
Like I knew the dude who was the manager, and we every time we'd go in, we'd talk. He liked to see it similar taste, so we'd talk about Halo or Call of Duty or whatever. And I mean, everyone liked that shit when we were in college. But uh, and, and every time he'd be like, "Oh, we're hiring you," and I'd be like, "Ah, oh, here's my application," and he'd be like, "We're not gonna hire you. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna hire the girl that applies, obviously." I mean, as far as business moves go, I guess. Yeah, well, you gotta hire the the gamer girl to work at the GameStop. Hmm. Whoa! Hey, wait, is GameStop in a different physical location than it used to be? I thought it was further down than I remembered it being, but I I, I, so I switched you know. the camera to 2007 mode, and GameStop ain't there no more. But I know it was on the strip. <laughs> I got a dumb question. How do you change the year? In the top left, under where it says the address, there's a little like drop down where it'll say like the date or whatever. Uh -huh. If you open that, you can. You can change the change the date, scroll through the, and then you just have to click on the image, and it'll pop up. God, yeah, oh that wait, really that GameStop was wasn't open in, when we first went to school there. Right, right. Weird. Weird. This is all. Oh, chat, like no one talk. Bar. We're reminiscing. Leave us alone. We're busy right now. Yeah. Did yeah, you donate yeah. to the thing yet, chat? Or do you, you should donate to the <laughs> thing. You gotta donate. Seven thousand eight hundred ninety-eight dollars. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Dude, gas gas at the Shell, which was not a good gas station, it was always overpriced, is two dollars and seventy five cents. <laughs> I w wish. <laughs> I don't remember uh, the Asian Grill being there either. It was a sandwich place, wasn't it? Which sandwich corner? place? Yeah, no, Potbelly's used to be on that yeah, corner. Yeah, Potbelly used mm. to be at the end. Yeah, yeah. Dude, look, it's the Dirt Hill. Oh, hey, this this street right here, I crashed my bike down once and ended up in the middle of this intersection in traffic. I lived. It's fine. Okay. Anyway. As, you guys remember as, college? Crazy, right? Reminiscing is wonderful, but we have the future to look forward to. The future oh of our the next generation's education. Yeah. Which is very important. He's right. Important. He's right. Bob, why is it important? I mean, you don't want dumb kids in charge of everything, do you? Exactly. Old people? That's exactly. what I'm saying. Well, Look at our generation. We didn't get enough funding and we're ruining the planet. Help. You're not wrong. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that, but you're not wrong. <laughs> um, no, so we're here raising money for the Wynwoods Educational Foundation. Uh, it is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to support enriching and uh, co honestly cool educational opportunities for students in the Winton Woods City School District. Uh, Winton Woods is a community uh, that's north of Cincinnati. It's like it's up in the suburbs, but it's inside of uh, the Outer Belt, inside of 275. And um, they're not. This the educational foundation is not funding anything that the district is funding already. It's not doubling funds. It's funding things like uh, Shakespeare in the Park coming to perform at Winton Woods schools and, and share, you know, drama and, and performance with the kids, show them uh, what being an actor could be like. Uh, it's funding things like giving teachers resources for cool extra uh, programs like the stock market game uh, to where, you know, students get some fake money, they buy some stocks, they're learning about how the markets work, interest rates, investing, all that sort of thing, those sorts of things. It's, it's projects like that, things that are gonna enrich and uh, engage kids more than traditional, you know, lesson plans and teaching stuff might. Traditional teaching, that's all necessary. That's all underfunded as well. Uh, that's a separate issue. The Educational Foundation is currently working on an initiative to fund um, the remaining supplies and uh, equipment that they need to fully outfit the newly built uh, David Bell Auditorium. Uh, David Bell is my father-in-law. Cards on the table. He's sort of the one who told me about this opportunity. But Witten Woods was on Tiltify, uh, and so it's easy. Tiltify is a great platform. And uh, the auditorium, they need uh, lights. There's literal dark spots on stage because they built a new auditorium and they tried to use the what they had from the previous setup, uh, but there's just not enough lighting equipment or not the right lighting equipment to get a fully lit, nice looking stage. 
Uh, they need a communication system so that people, like, you know, like walkie-talkie sort of thing, so people can communicate around the theater when they're doing productions. Stuff like this. The auditorium is built, but it is not 100% functional yet. Uh, it needs all of the finishing touches. So, uh, yeah, we're at $8,158 raised. Thank you so much to everyone who has donated. Mm -hmm. Very generous. We appreciate you. Also, if you want to control what we talk about, uh, there's a poll going on right now where you can vote with your dollars. Uh, currently, the first topic, the winning topic, is uh, we're going to talk about a time we got away with breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. But you could also vote for what were our most, uh, who were our most interesting friends in school, or what was our favorite school art or science project. Uh, Art and Science Project was winning. It has swung the other way. So mm -hmm. now, a time we broke the rules is winning. Uh, but you can also submit a question for the Q&A. What time do we have to uh, answer those? Because if, if we have the Q&A after that, and that locks in 57 minutes. So we should get these, these topics discussed. Yeah, well, we can, we can close down the topic poll. You want to give everyone a, one last minute to... Get, get your vote in for your topic. 55 seconds. Vote. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, how sure. do I look at how do I look at the questions? When do I look at that? That's a good question. Put it in the question pile. Yeah, I'm going to submit a question so I can look at the questions. Mm -hmm. Huh. Can't seem to find it. <laughs> uh... Seems like a bit of a problem, but... Uh... Oh, you have oh, questions no. we'll, as well. We'll get there. We'll get Good there. Answers. All right. Uh, incentive. How do I? How do I look? Hey, uh... <laughs> hey, earbuffs <laughs> chat. Guys, what if we just make up questions and names, pretend we're? Yeah, answering? no. What if we just do whatever we want anyway? It don't matter. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty all much right. what we do all the time anyway. So would it be really that different? I guess. No, it really wouldn't. All yeah, right. that's right. All right, chat. You can listen to good. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know if I'm done or not with questions but that's fine uh -huh. i i really i can't find the place to i guess i'll just have to search through the donations mm -hmm. well while you're getting that i've got another topic that's unrelated while people get their last poll answers in uh great what what do you guys say like that man no it was enthusiasm you. it was not it was manifested Good enthusiasm for you. it was not man all right anyway McDonald's menu hacks. Customers upset after new menu items require customers to put sandwiches together. <laughs> new feature! Make your own food! <laughs> Only at McDonald's. Come on in, pay your money, buy your own supplies to make the food, and then make it and cook it yourself at home. I mean... I guess it's uh, the make do it yourself. I, I I wouldn't be totally opposed to having to like build my own sandwich because if if there was like you know how in the kitchen they have those trays the warming trays with like the yellow plastic from the 1980s warming trays. Yeah. Um, yeah. If there was like another handle on the other side that in the custom area where you pull out and you grab like an egg or a patty or something like that and you slap a burger together, I wouldn't be too opposed to that. However, I have I I think this is just some quote unquote four new menu items that customers have to build themselves they have a hack menu why have a hack menu when we have to build it ourselves i don't know what this is their new land land air and sea sandwich what what <laughs> i don't i just imagine you walk uh, in you walk up to the registered place your order you're like hey oh, I'm like, I'm this like, is Great. A, this is them stealing our unisonis video yeah <laughs> it is yeah it is it Legit actually just is oh my god that is what it is it's just like an informational thing that they put out that's like build your own sandwiches and we built the perfect mcdonald's sandwich i don't remember what the resolution was of that what did you guys make it looked like the sandwich on the right that i have here uh there's a there's an actual image of the guy the land air and sea L literally it looks exactly like that sandwich on the right with a little bit of the sandwich on the on the second to the right Beautiful. You I... walk in, they just give you a, an apron to put on, a name tag. All right, make your sandwich, and then they fire you on the spot after as soon as your sandwich is done. Uh, it's the gig economy at work. Beautiful. Oh, I can see. I see the thumbnail. If you Google it, 
There's no there's no other image that comes up, but there is a thumbnail. Uh-huh. Uh, that, that looks pretty similar. What do you call that sandwich? The big filkin? I the dude. Chick fish? I have no idea. This reminds me of uh like I don't know who makes these things, but it's probably the same department that made that like uh McDonald's employees expense guide. Have you ever seen this? No. It's like let me see if I can find the actual one. Uh McDonald's uh employee expense guide um so it's an image with like an example of a monthly budget i found oh it here. i've seen this yeah, yeah 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 yeah. uh here it is this this was so i've I had lots of conversation about this this is a joke yeah it's it's legitimately a joke because there's a line on there because it's got expenses for like savings mortgage rent Hilarious that they put a savings one in there. Um, yeah. But it's got like... Okay, so you got income from first job. Income from second job is on the second. Everybody has a second job. Everybody, Everybody knows this. Job. Can't have just one. That way your total monthly income is 2060, which is still not great. Whoa, 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 whoa. It could be a lot higher. Where's other income? Yeah, other income. Yeah, why are you doing the hustle? Income. Your third job, and it's just like it, it's yeah. so it's so funny because health insurance is twenty dollars. Yeah, twenty dollars. That wouldn't even pay for a dental plan nowadays. No. And like, what are you? Uh, <laughs> all all of these are a joke. I love how car and home insurance is on one thing together. Exactly. Yeah. In two thousand and ten, <laughs> when yeah. uh, over a decade ago. We lived in a not great apartment in Cincinnati. Uh -huh. It was a hundred dollars a month for renter's insurance alone, uh -huh. and my yeah. car insurance was like triple that because yeah. I was a kid with a car. Yeah, my my shitty one bedroom apartment when I was going to UC was six fifty a month, and that was like the cheapest I could find. Like this, it's it's just. Was that that one that was kind of underground? Yeah. It was. I remember that one. There was That's a cheaper a, one, a great place. but I literally walked into it and there were bugs crawling around. That was five fifty. Mm, like cool. it was. It was. That was actually underground. Then the next. So one what was you're first saying floor. is you're a snob, and I that's am, why you went over your budget. I needed the quality. You know, <laughs> I have standards. Well, thank mm. God your heating is zero dollars too. Yeah, heating zero heat. dollars. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, electric ninety. If you have any computer, that's laughable. Other is a hundred, and, and then you have eight hundred dollars of spending money. Sure, 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 sure. Anyway, this—I don't think this was ever supposed to be actually put out to the public, but of course, it was so funny that, uh, yeah. Well, it wasn't funny. It was actually very sad. So, which but one's anyway. the first job? Which one's the second job? <laughs> Uh, well, well, it the 1050 out, or the 955. It turns yeah. out neither of those jobs is at McDonald's because you uh, no call no showed the other day, so you're fired. Uh -huh. ah. <laughs> what about my McFillet a duck and fish? I don't know. You got Billy yourself. <laughs> the the McTurduck and uh, witch. It's like the great race of fast food. You go to Wendy's, you go to Long John Silver's, you go to Taco Bell. And then you come back to McDonald's, they check all your items in the bag, and then you're allowed to purchase the items that can actually complete it. And if you get it, you get an achievement. That's And they'll give you an NFT to it. Eh? Eh? Oh, oh boy. Every, every, every purchase from uh, from fast food places in the future is just going to be an NFT. You're going to buy your McDouble and your, and your large Coke through the blockchain. Uh-huh, yeah. But then you're going to eat them. Yeah, we could give you a sandwich or or here's a monkey a wait does that mean that your your uh, poop is an nft your group is an if NFT? you poop? if you bought if you bought food and the food was an nft and then you ate it and pooped it out does that mean that your turd is still the nft i mean in the in the in the law of like information cannot be created or destroyed or whatever that is yes i'm assuming so i kind of like that yeah if there's a form of NFT I have to be on board with, I choose that. A poop Just a NFT. bunch of rich guys with bags of turds. Like, oh, this one was... Uh, uh, I actually went to Wolfgang Puck's restaurant, and yeah. uh, he made a Duck Lorange NFT. I it, crapped it out It actually the next is, day. if you think about it, it's the perfect encryption process because it's digested through your body, <laughs> it's, and it can't be reverse engineered. 
It's undecryptable. <laughs> it's not secure. totally secure. It's Your secure own NFT there. bio encryption process takes place. <laughs> I exactly. can just see like Zuckerberg, like in the metaverse. Uh, you actually you actually use your own bio in- encryption to uh, make sure that everything you buy stays yours. Yeah. Everything uh, is everything's poop. Everything's this poop. Poop economy. This is slightly unrelated, but I'm a little concerned about my trending topics. I don't know about you all, but for me, trending topics are apple juice, seductive Sunday, and Jimmy Carter. Where are you looking? And I, are you, do you mean on Twitter, like your for oh, you? Okay. No, no, it's it's just it's like the it's general the trending. One. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the your trending thing. I don't know what that. I just about. don't know why seduction and Jimmy Carter are side by side along with apple juice. I don't have any of that stuff. I got oh. Pro Bowl, Demon Slayer, Easies, uh-huh. Jared Bynum, who is apparently a basketball player. I know nothing about. Yeah. Twitter knows what I like. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I actually have a question back on the topic of McDonald's. Maybe you guys can help illuminate me. Because McDonald's, you know, you franchise a McDonald's, but you have to go to, like, McDonald's school to franchise, right? Yeah. yeah. So is there a rule on how you must, like, do how much things cost at the restaurant or how you must pay employees or the structure of the employees at the restaurant? Is that, like, regulated? Because I've always wondered what would happen if you made – a franchise of let's say it wasn't mcdonald's like you had a franchise but you made it so that the employees like got a percent of the revenue right because i've always wondered Mm. wouldn't that make it wouldn't that make your employees incentivized to make it the best mcdonald's possible like is so i don't i don't know specifically about mcdonald's but i do know that in general and and this was sort of invented and or refined by mcdonald's Mm -hmm. so that's why they're sort of the most famous for it basically you're granted the way it works is mcdonald's will buy the land where your mcdonald's is set to be and then Uh, lease it to you right so they own the land they lease it to you you're granted a license from mcdonald's to use their products logos everything use Mm -hmm. all their suppliers but the license is basically a contract where they say very specifically this is what you will serve. This is how it will be prepared. You will follow these procedures. I think, but I don't know for sure. That includes them setting the prices of all of your things on the menu, hmm. setting the scale at which you pay employees and how you can play, pay employees and what type of employees they are, that they will be at will, hmm. that sort of thing. I think you don't get to have a McDonald's unless you do exactly what corporate McDonald's wants. Yeah. I, 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 that's what I was your thinking. license and you lose everything you invested in this because then, you don't own the land or anything. You don't you own make any, any of it. Barrels. You gotta like get the golden arcs or the, the golden loops. have to do to get the, the ice golden cream loops of McDarrells. <laughs> <laughs> what do have we you have guys pay? heard? Have you guys heard about the, the actual scam that is the ice cream machines? I heard no. there's actually a lawsuit that was brought against them at one point. I haven't heard this now. Okay, so there's a video. Ah. <sighs> There's a guy that I watch. He used to be with Vice. Now he has his own YouTube channel. I can't remember his name, but he did a very good video on it where he went into detail. The It feels like McDonald's ice cream machine is always broken, right? Sure. Uh, right. But it's literally, it's actually a scam. McDonald's is basically contracted with, it's either one company nationwide or or one or two companies, but the one is the one that scams and has most of the machines. They supply the machine. It does everything ice cream related. The machine is very finicky Mm -hmm. and you're not allowed to call anyone to work on it. That's not an officially licensed technician from the company. And it's uh, the lawsuit, I think, is I forget. I think it's possibly a monopoly. I don't know. But basically, this company makes the machine so that it does break all the time it's touchy it's finicky it's things like uh there's a cleaning cycle at the end of every day you're supposed to run a cleaning cycle where you basically dump some hot water in the machine and it does some stuff and it washes itself out and the sensor that senses whether or not the cleaning cycle successfully completed doesn't work like half the time for no reason it's just like a hot water like swoosh it around spit it out cleaning cycle and if the sensor uh, fails to read that you clean the machine like two times in a row. It locks down the machine. You have to get a technician to come fix it. There's no fixing it yourself. There's no 
oh, just like turn it off and on, try again. It locks you out completely. There's nothing you can do. And it's there's a movement. Um, the uh, This is also a big movement in relation to things like Teslas and like iPhones, the like right to repair movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where people basically say like, if you own a thing, legally you have a right to be able to fix it. You should not have to pay the company you bought it from to also fix it. Uh -huh. If in, in like fixing an iPhone is not something everyone could do, but there are a bunch of people who, uh, ru you know, like run iFixit shops who could absolutely replace your phone screen without you having to pay Apple half the price of a brand new iPhone just to put a new screen in a thing that you dropped once. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are lawsuits ongoing in a lot of, uh, well, several states that I know of at least. One is in like Massachusetts. It's like an automobile right to repair thing where they're mm -hmm. trying to force Tesla to sell parts. Not even like force Tesla to really give anything up that they would lose money on, mm -hmm. just to force them to sell replacement parts because right now you basically can't get a replacement part for a Tesla. Um, and I think that's what this ice cream machine thing is also about. It's like a mm -hmm. right to repair. Like if you own this machine, but you can't, you can't do anything like they don't even give you a manual. There are guys who have figured out um, how you can get into this, the secret system settings to reset things so that it's not you don't need a tech to come and just basically reset your machine and it's mm -hmm. working. It's not broken at all. It's a software thing. Yeah. Uh, if you do that, you might lose. You might get uh, in trouble with McDonald's or in trouble with the company that sold you the thing. It's it's insane. It actually is like extortion, or I don't know if that's the right thing, but it actually is like criminally criminal activity that they're they make the machines kind of shitty, and then they make it so you have to pay them to send someone out to fix it. No, definitely that that sounds totally logical. I believe that 100. percent And the whole right to repair thing, like it's it, it is a big extension of this. Uh, well, in a weird way, because it's like corporate right to repair versus like personal right to repair, but it's all about like controlling what you own. You know what I mean? It's like companies don't want you to actually own what you own. You know, printer companies don't want you to actually, like, be able to replace the ink with something that you make because that would destroy their business model. But it's just like if you buy something, you should have every right to take it apart, learn how it works. It's yours. You bought it from someone. But with all the, like, the service industries and, like, all these accessory industries from something like that, there's money to be made there. And whenever there's money to be made, people want to control it and lock it down. You know, the essence of capitalism, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Capitalism. Mm -hmm. yes, Love it. capitalism. Yeah, true capitalism. Controlling things so that there's no competition or any way anyone can innovate. Yes, Everyone Comp bitches about capitalism. If you ever capitalism. try living in lowercaseism, it's much worse. <laughs> I hate hmm. that so much. <sighs> it's fine. It's Just be thankful it. we're in the capital part. Uh huh. Yeah. Wouldn't that be uppercaseism mm -hmm. if you're trying to make that? No. Okay, yeah. you're right. It's, it's like it's like um, <laughs> in a weird way. I actually ran into something about this recently. I I discovered that this is kind of related, but I discovered that uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is uh, a game, and it, it came is. out. Hmm? Yep. Yeah, I have no Back. opinion about the game whatsoever, but I did discover that the game has full Korean audio translation. And this is very interesting to me because I'm trying to learn Korean, and that is a big game with a lot of dialogue and a lot of talking. So I wanted to get those audio files, not because I wanted to share them, but because they are in the game and I wanted to pull them apart so that I could create flashcards out of them so I could start to learn or at least get the transcript of the subtitles so that I could create like a frequency, a list, so I'd know which words to learn first so that I would understand the game more. This was sure. like my approach. And so I started diving into the, uh, the files. And what I discovered was it's so unbelievably locked down because they don't want you pulling apart the files. And I remember back in the day when game files were just, you installed the game, you go in the directory, and there's all the files, and it's it's there because that's part of the game. But this one, 
I, I put I managed to get the subtitles out because there's a community out there that has tools that they have custom built just to crack open these files, specifically these files. They're called mm. dot archive archive files, uh, which is part of Cyberpunk's proprietary archives. But in those files, everything's completely disorganized because the file management is just nonsensical to actually linear understanding of it. But the audio files are in this proprietary game audio format called WEM. And the oh, only gross. the only way the only way you could possibly unpack a WEM file is by going to the maker of the WEM file called WYS, which is apparently the only thing game companies nowadays use for audio compression. It's not like it's any better. The only thing it does is, is prevent you from accessing it. That's the only thing it does. It doesn't compress it more. It doesn't is do it? anything like that. Why? It just makes it hard to access. Isn't I don't know why. Is a moddable game, though? Isn't there, like, a whole Steam thing for modding it? The, uh, it's moddable in, like, the the mechanics and things of it, but that doesn't necessarily mean you get full access to the files. Yeah, yeah. You can mod okay. Cyberpunk, but it's just, like, why? Why are these files in a format that is so difficult to utilize? I'm not... What am I going to do with the... What is anyone going to do with the audio files? Are they going to chuck it out of the internet? <laughs> Everybody, you don't want to play the game. Here's all the audio from the game. You're going to love this. It's like, I'm trying There's to... There's a story with no context or visuals. Yeah. It's, it's ruined. To to make them do it's that. That sounds like extra work. It, it is. Well, it's it's one of those pipeline things, right? One, yeah, one yeah. that company that made the compression thing got one or a couple or, you know, some big publisher was like, hey, look, this is a, this is a game kind of industry specific compression uh, thing. It has a bunch yeah. of these great stuff. Plus, you can lock down your files so no one can hack your whatever. And some company was like, sick. <laughs> great ea games or someone was like yes and invested yeah. and so now every other games company is like well this is the industry standard so we just use the thing but but why but i mean why? i'm sure that if you asked a games industry person they'd uh -huh. be like well you uh you're proprietary so you want to protect your ip you know you yeah, want to yeah, sure. but like that's bull like, I've got the files on, because what I could do, and it would be just as annoying, but, like, they play through the game, right? I record game stuff all the time. I could turn down the sound effects. I could turn down the music. I could turn on everything yeah. except for the dialogue. And, you hey, I'd be able to play. capture it. But yeah. I'm already recording everything, and you're okay with that. Like, why can't right. I just... If anyone works at uh, Project Red, can I get just the script? Can I get it? Because all I want to do with it is parse the Korean version of the script and the Korean audio. Can I have that? I'm trying to learn Korean. Give me. I really appreciate you making a full Korean localization. Can I have the words so can I, I can... have the money? That's not... No. That's not, no, that's not what I'm looking no, for. No, that's not you what we're talking about. about. I'm just, I thought we were all asking for something here. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> anyway. It's just, like, it's just like these little things that have bled into every part of like the consumer market that are locked down a little more, a little more here, a little more here. And you'd never know, you'd never understand. It's like, because of supposed writer copyright laws, you're playing the game, the script is right there in front of you. People could transcribe it by hand. I just don't want to do that. <laughs> like, it's, it's not like it's inaccessible. It's just a pain in the ass. That's the yeah. only difference. It's not protecting them. It's making it harder, which I guess. But for people that actually wanted to do something like steal it for nefarious purposes, it's not going to stop them. It's going to stop me because I don't have time for that shit and it's not what I wanted to do. But at the same time, oh, it's just annoying because the only people that suffer are the general consumers. Anyway. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. No, I mean, I. it's one of those things where, like, this is a thing about humans, or maybe it's just Americans mm. in general, that I find so weird. People are so protective of stuff. And maybe this is not a direct translation, but, like, in private private citizens are like, I need I need my privacy. Mm -hmm. Like, don't, don't you look at me while I'm in my yard. I'm in my yard. Like, you're outside in your yard. Like, uh. I don't understand what you think is going to happen. But companies being like that, locking everything down, I guess they think, well, what if we decide we want to monetize it? So we want to make sure we maintain control over it. But I can't, I don't, I, I can't imagine how that benefits anyone. And it just makes stuff unusable for no reason. Mm, yeah. 
Also, this is uh, uh, something I talked about a while ago, but I found it and I wanted to shout it out. The YouTube channel I was talking about is Johnny Harris on YouTube. Uh, uh, he did. Uh, he makes really interesting videos in general that are really cool. He's like an in-depth like docu series type creator, and his a video called "The Real Reason McDonald's Ice Cream Machines Are Always Broken" uh, has like almost 10 million views. It's a great video. It's a good watch. It has a lot more detail and information about the McDonald's ice cream thing and right to repair sort of stuff. Um, oh, but yeah, there, no, I... There there was a... Wait, let me see if I can find it. Speaking of really weird but cool documentary videos, I love these kind of things. There was this video on why China's largest volcano is so unusual. And I found mm. this, and I'm sure a lot of people found this because of that volcano that erupted in... Uh, where was it? It starts with a T. Um, uh, Tonga, right? Tonga, yeah, Tonga. Um, and then this popped up on YouTube, and it's... 27 minutes long, but it is the most fascinating thing. And I won't explain the whole video because it's not important to talk about right now, but it's just like this volcano is unlike any other volcano on Earth. And it taught me more about tectonic plates, like geo uh, geological activities, like the way water can influence things and penetrate deep into the Earth's crust and how like magma plumes form. I learned more from that one video, the 27 minute China largest volcano is so unusual video than I ever did in school or even cursory exploration about volcanoes on Wikipedia or whatever. So it's just like, it's nuts and it's super fun. But I love that there are so many of these documentary videos on YouTube. I, I applaud anyone who makes these kinds of videos. Yeah, it's, such, it's an interesting thing trying to find like ed educational informative stuff on YouTube because I feel like a lot of it, if you're, if you're looking for a specific topic or something, you'll go, mm. you'll go to YouTube and do a search and you'll find a video and it starts and you're like, this is about why China's largest volcano is being more unique than any. And it's like, okay, well, somebody, this is a, <laughs> this is not promising. You know, mm. it's like if somebody paid a Fiverr actor to do a voiceover for a thing that's, yeah. that clearly is just made up facts about a volcano. But yeah. some of them are fascinating. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to save this, uh, volcano. Watch the video. It is, you will not be able to turn it off if you're at all interested in volcanoes. It is so fascinating. I do think you recommend this channel. It's on a channel called Deep Dive. I haven't seen any other videos on them. I don't know. I don't if they're know all the same, before, I want to so. watch more, but I have not seen any of them. They only have four videos, <laughs> probably because wow. they take a while. But uh, I think I think Kurzgesagt is probably my favorite video. They don't really do documentary things, but they do kinds of things. Um, I always love a Kurzgesagt video, like great stuff. I bought their recent uh, book on the immune system. Mm. Mm. It's like a it's like a college textbook level. Uh, like immunology i don't know about the the how current the information is cur to the current science but i trust that they have at least checked their sources and it's it's a good book it's well made i don't know haven't read it all yet i looked at the pictures the picture's very pretty <laughs> <laughs> i just fade through it i'll look at the pictures uh, yeah, i like yeah. pictures Mm -hmm. Remember pop up books? Those were the dude. Pop up dude, books. Pop, pop up, up books, books have gotten way more elaborate in modern times. Have yeah. you seen modern pop up books, bro? No. no. Crazy. Uh, I came across my first pop in book whenever we were at UC. Speaking of UC earlier, I don't know what that means. What is a pop? It was in a book? book. It was a book with a big hole in the middle, and as you turned the pages, they were different outfits for your penis that you would put through the hole. Why? What? Why was it? there was a bookstore across from uh uh oh god what were the buildings called where Beatums was uh, there was a bookstore like right UPA. across the street yeah there's a bookstore right across the street from UPA and there was a book with a hole in it I was like what the fuck is this and I opened the pages and it was just like dress up your penis while you you mean Du Bois Du Bois Du Bois, du Bois. I think it was Du Bois it wasn't all the way du down Bois. that way oh. it was like literally right across from like Beatums it was all the way huh. down the other end God. God, that just made me angry about college textbooks. I'm suddenly <laughs> oh, no. so furious. <laughs> oh, no. God, sudden I'm rage so has come over you what about... What do you mean? It was great paying full price for our teacher's specifically written book that uh -huh. we had to have and the hardcover only copy of. Going back to resell your books and you they look you in the eye and offer you $5 for that $200 Dude. book that you know they're going to resell for $190. It's yeah. just... <laughs> it's just... I and And for some reason, I wasn't 
smart enough to just sell it to other students directly yeah. through Craigslist or something. And I just like, I remember walking, I only did it once and then I never sold the book again. I just kept them um, <laughs> like, cause I'm not going to give that back. Uh, but it's just like, just ugh. burned them for heat. It might as well. Would have been better Dude, money. If I get a copy of the Scarlet letter. I will burn it for heat. That was the worst fucking book. Yeah. I, I will openly tell <laughs> anyone who's in college, like you can find full textbooks online, various places yeah. for free. Like or at the very least, just don't buy it from the bookstore. Don't buy it oh from my the God. bookstore. Your college bookstore, don't do it. Even if they say you need that edition, you don't need that edition. The differences between the editions are not that grand. Sure, you might get a question that's different on like some homework they assign. Get it from someone else. Don't spend full price on those books. Never do. I was I, In my undergrad, I was not super concerned with the books because I... Most of my classes I took, I was in music school. There are books for that, but it's not like insane amounts oh of textbooks God. and things. The engineering But, uh, dude, law school. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Every semester was like six to 10 or 12 different books. And and literally, I went to a private law school, which that's my own mistake. And I'm I own that. But it was the professors were up their own asses about like, it has to be. It has to be the newest edition. It has to be the correct edition. Uh -huh. You're going to be missing things. And if you showed up to class with the wrong one, they would give you shit the whole time. Uh -huh. They would not. Some of them would like hound you until you got the upgrade. It was insane. And literally, I had I sold as many as I could to other students because basically at the end of every semester, you're like, hey, I have these 25 books for sale. Uh, if you're taking these classes next semester, hit me up. I, I had these professors, here's my books. Mm -hmm. And I sold as many as I could. And still, you buy them for like 100, 200, 300 bucks. And you, you don't want to screw your classmates over. Mm -hmm. So you sell them to your classmates for 50 bucks, 80 bucks, whatever seems fair. Mm -hmm. and you get a little back. I ended up with two dozen books after I was done with law school. Couldn't sell them. They were all already a, a year or two years old, which means they're not the right edition. Uh, I couldn't sell them anywhere. I sold them to a used bookstore, like by the pound. I sold like 25 or 26 books for like $20. Uh, by the pound. I, I, I brought them in and I was like, do you want any of these? And she was like, not really, but I'll give you 25 bucks store credit. And I was like, oh my God, I just need to get rid store of these credit. books. Store credit. I'm not carrying these books back into my house, back up the stairs. Just <laughs> keep them. Yeah. I might oh. as well have just dropped them out of my car while I was driving down the road. <laughs> you Don't do that. That's really dangerous. For store credit for one tenth of a book. Uh, <sighs> yeah, I think they gave me the store credit and I was like, I'm just going to buy something right now. And I went and bought like one book and a calendar yeah. and was like, good. I, people need to understand the glory that is libraries and like the fundamental concept of a library and like how beneficial that resource is. Like, and I'm not saying like your college textbooks are going to be in a library, but my God, but they might, they might, Can they might be in there. Like it's, it's not about the book itself in, in these classes. That's what I learned. It's not about the book. Like they're teaching you the stuff anyway. They're just referencing a book. If you take diligent notes, you you never even I there are some classes I never opened the book. I never yeah. not once. I didn't do homework a lot, so you know that's another <laughs> thing. But also I didn't need to. I I I skated through college like barely opening books, barely doing textbooks. I had a like a 3.0, and that's all I needed to get by. I was okay. But just like <laughs> libraries, God, fun libraries, go to libraries. Libraries are such a good concept, and I can't believe people hate libraries. I can't Dude, libraries it. have like DVDs. Some libraries have video games oh, now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You oh, get yeah. all kind. Of, libraries are the Netflix of Dude, the twenty second century. The internet of the library is probably better than the internet of my house. Like it's just like it's insane. Some of these libraries. Plus, and if you use a VPN, you can watch porn on them. <laughs> Don't listen to Bob. You'll get banned from the library. <laughs> no, no, do you? They won't know if you use the right. If you protect your search history, they'll never know what you There's were doing like on there. There's cameras in there. They can see you. You gotta find For the one. The bank class. The bank of computers that face away from the cameras and that the desk people are not gonna see. And you just gotta have something where you can alt tab real quick. Have like have like a you know, have like a Lexus Nexus search up on one on one window and then alt tab and that's where you're. 
fun stuff can be. My mm. OnlyFans professor said I had to watch this. <laughs> do you think there is a class there's gotta no. be a class out there no, no, somewhere no. it's not it's not a class All about only fans it's a professor who's really hurting for money who's in class is like you get extra credit if you come check out my only fans and you're like oh, no. well i'm not really into 50 year old men mr gardner but how much i can't extra say i'm not money. curious well, i do need the extra credit oh my god the, the, he's in the front just like it's not just me you don't know. It's like him and his next door neighbor buddy, and they're just like recreating two girls. One. Nope. Not you that could, one. Yeah, you can stop at any time. You can, you don't have to keep going. I, I I like your question mark, but I also like my question. Okay. Let's let's answer them both. Is there a class on how to be successful on OnlyFans or whatever you were going to ask? And yeah. how many professors do you think have done that, solicited their <laughs> class, or how many had one and didn't think their kids would find it, and then like. One kid figured out their their professor has an OnlyFans, and then everyone was like, "Oh my god!" I do not see a Mr. Gardner OnlyFans. I tried to search it, couldn't. Find oh, it. I changed the name to save the identity of the oh, professor of that I clearly, Weird. definitely had in the last decade since OnlyFans existed. Didn't want to. I wasn't going to sub. Sucks. I just wanted to see if it existed, for the record. <laughs> I, uh -huh. I I I'm sure there are tons of people that are trying to supplement their income with OnlyFans. Like I am, I'm not saying that doesn't happen. Um, is there a class? Is there a teaching? Is there a class? The proper way to like to Dude, spread them or something? There's got to be. We should go around to colleges and universities and pitch <laughs> so, teaching a class on how to do stream and do social media. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We it, we oh, okay. we well, know that, that, that and one of us less. is successful at it. So Wade. Wade. Yeah. Me? I got it. Okay. You got it. <laughs> Dis Mr. University of Cincinnati, can you hire us to come teach you? Mr. Stuff? Universe of Cincinnati? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Schoolman. Why do I always sound like I'm on drugs whenever I'm with you guys? I don't know why that is. I'm not. I've, you control what you're saying. I don't yeah. know why you say that. Like, we, you say, like, we're doing something that makes you act like that. You guys are like, I don't know. It's like, um,. One of those animals where you touch them and they let off like some weird scent thing that makes you hallucinate. You guys do that to me. A skunk, but with drugs? Yeah. Yeah, you guys are my skunk drugs. I don't... I don't know if that's a thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know if skunks that's a make thing. you high though, but there is, isn't there a creature where it like has hallucinogenic properties if... If there was, don't you think there would be a big scandal about teenagers trying to find those creatures just to get a high? That's true. I mean, I'm if sure that there existed, are. it would be an it would be a pandemic across Maybe it was the nation. Maybe Star Trek I, or something. I don't know. You know, it, it's kind of weird. I I think a lot about how there's just so many species of plants that exist that like so many, and they all have like different like chemicals inside of them. So like you got marijuana, which has like THC and CBD in it. You got tobacco with nicotine in it, and all these natural occurring things. Is there is there a plant? that exists out there that can cure like any disease at any time it's just like you never know or is there a plant out there that if you eat it you blow up you know something like that like it's i mean isn't crazy that chain reaction don't don't all pharmaceutical companies basically have that like branch of of reason they have people doing like chemical interactions where they're like testing proteins and they're just they're you know computer simming millions and millions of interactions just to yeah, see yeah. what happens but then there's also the guys where it's like i found this rare thing in the amazonian rainforest i found i only ever found one of them uh -huh. and it seems to cure cancer we're trying to figure out how the hell that happens <laughs> Like, isn't that a whole, isn't that a, an arm of research that pharmaceutical companies chase? Well, I, I don't know about, like, human experimentation. You got to go through a lot of hoopla to get, like, Oh, no, but you can do whatever going. you want to animals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't matter. You're, you're right, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, yeah, no, I, I don't know, but I've always assumed, I guess, or imagined that that's part. Cause yeah, there's all kinds of crazy stuff out there. Yeah. Or like things in the in the ocean, in the depths of the ocean that mm. have weird chemical compositions or like Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's all there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you just need one protein to bind to the one thing in your body that makes you blow up. Or makes your dick bigger. 
Those proteins. Tragic how <laughs> close together those proteins are. <laughs> They're very uh, close. It's yeah. a if you wanna if you wanna increase your size, it's a big risk. <laughs> but it's a big size increase. It's it's, it's like it's potent. like a it's the same chemical, but it's got a chirality to it. So you got the left oriented chemical that makes your dick bigger, and you got the right oriented one that makes you explode. <laughs> <Watch> you blow <laughs> up. <laughs> That's real so, 50 50. <laughs> so many guys. There would be a, a resort themed around that where it's like you got you could come here and take this drug in the safety of a bomb proof room uh, and uh make sure you don't hurt anyone you care about and you either uh die in a very exciting fashion and we'll videotape the whole thing and send it to whoever you want or you leave and go home and you're the happiest man alive <laughs> it's the hell of a gamble <laughs> oh man yeah, there's where, gotta where be crazy stuff out there. What? Yeah, no, that Wade. Where, where's this at? Where can I go? It's, it's uh, I I can tell you, but it costs uh, ten thousand dollars to yeah. even get that information. All right, Mark, cover me. I'll pay you back next week. Bob, can I borrow ten thousand dollars? Um, Wade, can you pay me that debt? I need to lend Mark some money. Oh, I would, but I'm busy that day. That's, that's, that's not how that works. <laughs> that's not how paying debt works or anything. But I'll always try. Yeah, because yeah, I, I am curious about, like, because, you know, uh, like, herbal medicine, I'm not a proponent of, what's what's the, the what's it called? Um, the, homeopathic, homeopathic medicine? Homeopathic, yeah. I'm not, I'm, about? Not, I'm, not a, I'm not a proponent of it. Like I'm not. I don't want anyone to think that I'm like everything can be cured by. It. I'm a fan of real medicine. Thank you, you chew very much. on dandelion leaves, and hey. it'll make your bowels Shut. explode. Don't like... bring up dandelions. All right, man. It was one time. What did you do to a dandelion? I thought I told this story before on Three Peens, where I used to, uh, when I was young, I thought dandelions were medicine. So I would take a dandelion, I would snap it in half, and it had like this white uh, goo in the stem. Oh, I would sure. Put it on a dandelion leaf and slap it on my cuts and scrapes. <laughs> Oh, God. What? <laughs> I've why? never heard what? Uh, yeah, I did that a lot as a kid. Why, why did you wait? So why? Why is there a reason that you thought that? Was that like a prank by someone or something? Or you just as a kid, you just I looked just at dandelions and like that looks healthy? I just made up things as a kid and I took them as fact. I was like, oh well, yeah, of course, this is a Native American healing remedy, and I just I just told myself that that was true. And I would take the dandelion, break it in half, rub the goo on the leaf, slap it on a cut, and move on. Did it work? I mean, I'm or not did dead. It, did it get infected and inflamed afterwards? Is, it, really is this why you thing. are the way you are? <laughs> Maybe. But I'm not dead. I'm not infected. I don't what, have weird scars. What if, Maybe what it if, did work. What if that was the thing that gave you your height? And you know now everyone's gonna be going out there and slapping dandelion. <laughs> dandelion splooge and cuts makes you real tall, <laughs> and your ass real big. So you know it's a fifty-fifty thing. Okay, well I have a I have a scientist yeah. chiming in on this discussion. Uh, Mandy, my wife, Doctor mm -hmm. Mandy, mm -hmm. uh, says that what you're talking about, Mark, uh, does exist. The field is called drug discovery, and it is a big thing. The biggest problem is that there's a lot of multiplicity. Uh, but machine learning is currently being applied uh, to make progress into uh, discovering w whether you should put dandelion goop in your cuts and so on. I like that. Yeah, I Mandy, like that. can you prove that I was right real quick for me? She Thanks. did say, she literally just texted as you were talking, oh my god, I did that too. I think she's talking about the dandelion goop. So. <laughs> and she's like the so smartest science person is, on Earth. Science is on something. your side, I guess. Yeah, Wait, a literal scientist has corroborated. <laughs> I have science and God on my side. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you can go that far. Look we, how that, Mandy and I turned out. We're two for two on dandelions. Everyone who's done it, proven by fact, has turned out great. I can't question it. I can't question it either. You it's know. the truth. I'm going to go find some dandelions right now and just cut my lip and put it on there to prove it. <laughs> Why not? I have to ask. I'm curious about the process. So it comes when you break. I'm familiar with the goop that's inside the dandelion. I never spread it on my injuries, but I, mm -hmm. I'm aware of that. You put it on the leaf. And then you, you put, put it on, leaf on the leaf. Why do you 
What leaf? Why did you put it on the leaf? What does that do? Can't you I just make a band aid, a natural band aid? Well, you like adhered the leaf to your cut with yeah, the Yeah, the goop was kind of sticky, so you'd put it on the oh. leaf and then the leaf stick to you. So you had like the, the balm in between, like, you know, it would, it would so, cover the cut. So nothing gross got in there, you know? You didn't want right. anything getting in right. your cut. That's what they say. That's what they say about cuts. You want to keep them moist and gross. That's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You literally are that Brian Regan joke, though. Where Thank the it's a, the group of kids playing, and that one of them hit, takes their bike off the jump and eats it and gets all banged up, and the kids rush over and they're like, "Ah, oh, oh, get some leaves!" <laughs> it's literally that's you as a that kid. Is, that was that is pretty much it. Well, I did it to myself, and I turned out perfect. Yeah. Oh, I I just want to mention real quick a segue. Uh, there are only thirteen minutes left for people to lock in our Q and A, and we have talked about none of the poll topics, and we have done nothing. All right, well, should we shut down the poll? I mean, we don't have to do anything, Mark. That's the that's the trick. We True. Yeah, we gave them one minute about Nothing. an hour ago, right? True. Guys, They've had time. This is your last chance to get a question in the Q&A section. If you donate a minimum of $25 right through the link down below, you go to the Tiltify page. You can also go to the URL, which is donate.tiltify.com slash at myskerm slash distractible dash WWEF. Make a donation. And right there. now, for the next two minutes, if you donate ten thousand or more, we will say thank you three times. That's true. That is That's true. actually I I will I'm backing Wade's promise on that three I times. Corroborate this. Yes, absolutely. So uh, um, please throw that out there. Consider making so anyway, a donation. Uh, I'm going to shut down the poll. I'm going to shut down the poll. Okay, poll is about to be shut down. That's do what you, I said. Do you guys know which one's career. winning? I don't know. Are you winning, son? Currently, the winning poll option, I guess, I guess the winning poll option, because I'm about to turn it off, is a uh, time that we got away with breaking the rules. With four thousand eighteen dollars and three cents, that one wins. I don't know if I, I. Mm. You have absolutely broken the rules, Wade. Don't. Well, no, I have. Don't be that but guy. I think don't it's a story guy. I told on the podcast already. We can retell stories here. That's that's not embarrassing to do. What? We, we but I'm pretty sure on the podcast I said it was a friend who did it. <laughs> I, I I do have a story. Oh. <laughs> well, I have one in mind, Mark, that I should have cleared with you beforehand. Oh, interesting. Um, that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. do, uh, I, we maybe even have told this before. It's just a story I like. Uh, do you remember the backpacks? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell Is that, that story. A, yeah, yeah. Well, that's okay. Okay, that's the one I was thinking about telling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that wasn't the one I was thinking of telling, but you can tell that story. Oh, okay. Oh, I like that. Well, okay. So who wants to go first? Uh, a time. This is what chat voted for with their hard-earned dollars donations. Mm -hmm. A time we got away with breaking the rules. I I'll tell uh, mine first because okay. it's already been told probably. And then you guys can tell the better stories after and mine can be forgotten. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So I had this friend who went to BlizzCon mm -hmm. and had a media pass and wanted to go watch the Overwatch tournament. Mm -hmm. This friend overslept because they're not like me and you guys who get up early in the morning and, you know, do all of our morning routines. This is some asshole who sleeps in till like two or three in the afternoon. Real shitty guy. Uh, and he wanted to go watch the Overwatch World Tournament or whatever it was called, like where the different countries were competing. Yeah. And uh, got there and the line had been condensed into one so there was not a media line and a general admission line and so on and so forth it was one line with everybody in it and i walked up and i said or my friend i mean walked up because i was you know already in there sitting down after mm -hmm. i'd walked up mm -hmm. my friend walked up and was like hey uh we have media passes can we go in and sit down and the guy's like no hate you get in line you stinky and he's like what what do you mean there's no seats and we're at capacity you have to wait like everyone else uh, so my friend went to go back and get in line, but he stood there for a minute, texted uh, some friends that were in already in and said, Hey, uh, we can't get in yada yada. And, uh, as if fate itself had decided to descend upon this moment and present an opportunity as he was typing this text message, two people walked up next to the line. And instead of getting in line, they walked toward a door on the left and they showed their badges and someone escorted them in. And my friend had an idea. 
So in a few minutes, two more people walked up toward that door. My friend and his friend walked in behind them and the front two showed their badge. Their, uh, the friend pretended to be part of that group, didn't show their front of their badge, but showed the back of their badge, which had nothing really that interesting on it that would show what kind of badge it was. And they were escorted back to uh, not the media area, but the area where all of the teams were sitting, the players from the US and South Korea and Japan and so on and so forth, they were all just chilling back there because this was the friends and family pass area not the media or general seating area. Mm. So s sweating a little bit, realizing they definitely shouldn't be there. These two lovable, perfect, beautiful friends walked through this area into like the friends and family seating and then proceeded to ask the person who escorted them, hey, oh man, I meant to grab some snacks before we got back here. Is there like a, some snacks back there or something? Like, oh, well, no, not really. But if you go around this way, you can get to the general food court. You'll have to come back over here and we'll have to escort you again. Oh, that's perfectly fine. So my friend snuck around, got into the media section, and no one was ever the wiser. Wow. That was Sounds like your friend time. really got away. Oh, yeah, no. Um, we figured it out, Wade. Figure out what? Hmm. I don't know why you're so cagey about that story. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. Like, I don't want like to be, in your I stream don't right now, an, not an, account, back. an account called Blizzard Security comes in and is like, hey, we heard... We heard what you did. Mm -hmm. uh, you're banned <laughs> forever. Well, there From was the, another moment you there. You can't come back. I, had a, I, had, I did have a friend who worked at Blizzard. This was not me. And um, I wanted to thank them for helping us get our badges, but I could not find them for the life of me, like the entire convention. I, could, like, I don't know if they weren't checking social media or whatever, but like they weren't responding to messages. So I asked them, I was like, hey, do you know this person who uh, works over with... Um, Oh god, what what was the game called where you had like all the different characters from like Warcraft and Diablo and it was like the League of Legends type game? Heroes of the Storm. Heroes of the Storm, yeah. Right. They worked with Heroes of the Storm. It's like, hey, they work in this department. Can you like point me there? Like, uh no, I don't really know, but uh here, come back this way. And they moved like a wall. I didn't know you could move <laughs> and sent me into like the backstage. <laughs> and then they like pushed it back, and we were just all of a sudden backstage with no escort, freely allowed to roam. I found somebody, asked them, they pointed me to another direction. Eventually I came to a chair where I swear to God, it felt like one of those mob movies where uh, Robert De Niro's sitting on the chair with like all of like the underboss and shit around him. Cause I came over to Mr. Mr. Blizzard, I guess. I don't know who had this like fucking posse of power standing around. I was like, hi, I'm trying to find my friend, uh, the Beth, can you? help me and he's just like uh who are you uh, how did you find your way back to my premises i don't know this beth but then again i can't know everybody who works beneath me it was very pompous it very much like it felt like he was the shit mm -hmm. i have no idea who he was but he was running the show and he had a lot of people that were like his fucking runners so whoever this guy was man he was like the mob boss of blizzcon didn't help me find my friend though but that exists. If you go to BlizzCon, just know somewhere behind one of the walls lies Mr. Mafia Boss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Neat. Yeah. I don't think, I've, I don't think I've ever gone to a convention. Ever. Ever, ever again. again. For any yeah. reason. Yeah. That's actually legitimate. I don't think I, I don't think I will. I don't know if I will. I mean, part of me misses like parts of it, but part of me is like god i'm so glad we're not traveling all the time not getting any sleep and coming home sick mm, yeah that was always the recipe it was like a lot of traveling a lot of like work and obligations and then getting sick on top of it that was always the recipe dude yeah. I, I don't know how i ever did that like the the pandemic being at home trapped at home stuff i don't know how i used to survive like going going out for fun the convention seems like a whole other world mm -hmm. i don't i can't imagine that sounds terrible now mm. how did i ever do that like on your feet doing meet and greets and things and like running around and i don't know i don't know man i don't know 
I don't know how you did either. You always had way more stuff than us. Yeah, we was... would do we would do one thing, or it was like the three of us, or like the five of us, or the tour group guys, or whatever. We don't, and I'd get done with that and be like, "Woof!" And then we'd be like, "Mark, you gotta go. You got another thing. We gotta get in five minutes." Uh, and you were like, "Okay, okay, we're going over okay. here. Now. I'll see cool. you guys at midnight tonight when I get back guys, to the hotel." <laughs> you guys want to have dinner on Sunday in two days? I guess <laughs> I don't know. I'll see you never. Yeah. Uh, okay, I got a story about how I got away with breaking the rules. Um, this is back in 2015, and I know uh, the year because I just recently had to rethink about this. Um, do you guys remember when I was back in Cincinnati and I went to the hospital? Yeah. 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 I got a picture of uh, pretending to kill you. Right? I know. Yeah. It was a very fun time. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, so Thank when you. I went there, uh, a lot of people were worried because, you know, I posted that video on YouTube with my voice all hoarse because I had a tube down my throat and whatever. Like the part where I got away with breaking the rules, it's partly because the rules were very stupid and we're talking about health insurance here. So I... A little facet of that whole story was actually played out on Twitter because when I got to the hospital, I had health insurance at the time, or at least I thought I did. I was oh, paying well. for insurance and I had been paying for insurance. I bought insurance myself ever since I was able to pay for insurance, um, just in case something like this ever happened because I had a proclivity at the time to going to the hospital a lot. Not that That's I don't true. now. But that happens for me. Um, so I get to the hospital and, you know, I'm, ooh, oh, the pain, whatever. And then in the midst of all that, one of the not doctors or nurses, but one of the office administrators walks into my room with a clipboard and glasses and a pen and says, um, the insurance we have on file for you is uh, not valid. So uh, do you have any other <laughs> insurance? And I'm like... Why would I have another insurance? <laughs> Why would I have backup insurance? I have I that, like that insurance. This person is the, the manager the from Office Space. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, mm, <laughs> yeah. These insurance reports. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, you know, in pain. So I, oh wow, I don't know. I guess I'll make a call or something. So I pull out my my health insurance card, you know, and I call them up, and they say that your insurance has been in valid as of a month ago mm. and i'm so i'm like that's poor timing why <laughs> jeez <laughs> pray tell <laughs> why and it's because if i'm remembering this properly i don't specifically remember but it's because they sent a letter a letter to my old address in Cincinnati where I first got the insurance. And they sent this letter and it was some kind of update of policies that I needed to consent to or something like that. I didn't sure. get the letter because I was in California at the time. I had been paying them money, mind you. I had been paying money. <laughs> And so their rules stated that it didn't matter whether I was paying money or not until I accepted that the insurance would not be valid. I thought this was bullshit in between me going, ooh, and ow, and ouch. Uh, so I, you know, really not really tolerating bullshit. I tweeted publicly directly at the insurance. Like, hey, why the fuck did you get me rid of my insurance? And I solved this through DMs, and they said they would call my hospital room. And so the next <laughs> thing you know, in two minutes, my phone in my room. I think I think Tyler might have been there when this happened because he was visiting me too. But my mom was there, and I believe Tyler was there. But then just like the phone rings, and I get this very concerned call from someone <laughs> at the insurance company. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not really so as that I got away with breaking the rules. It's that the rules were so stupid in the first place that they did not want this, like, bad press to come out. That They declined my life-saving operation <laughs> for yeah, no, this that's, reason. That's not a great article. The The headline... Uh, medical uh, healthcare insurance provider kills Markiplier because <laughs> <laughs> because they re refused he didn't fill out a form and they refused him healthcare. Yep. Like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so, that's probably worth dodging. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. I was because it, it was late night on like a, I think it was a Friday or something like that. So normal customer service hours, it was not. Yeah. So this was a very special call that I got just because they care so much.
Yeah, I know. They really wanted to make sure you got the care you needed. That's yeah. what they were here for. That's what health insurance providers really care about. Dude, having Twitter followers is a weird thing. I had that um, when we were coming home from the European tour, I flew through London and then I was supposed to fly through Boston and then to North Carolina to mm -hmm. home. Yeah. And um, there was this crazy ass windstorm in Boston, like mm -hmm. worst turbulence I've ever had. The entire airport shut down mm -hmm. <clears throat> after I landed. And um, I... That was, it was kind of like when you got stuck, when Delta's computers just broke, when you got yeah. stuck in DC, yeah. everything was just ruined, right? They closed down a whole airport for a whole evening. So like, I got like the last hotel room I could find. And I was just stuck. I was like calling the airline, like, hey, so when can I go? And they were like, I don't know. I don't know. Call back in a couple of days. And I was like, what the, what do you, what? And I just tweeted something that was like, I don't remember. It was, I tweeted at whichever airline, Delta or someone. And I was like, oh my God, they're so screwed right now. I can't even get a flight. I'm stuck forever. And then like, like a couple hours later, I just get a DM from the account for the airline that was like, hey, my son is like a huge fan of Mark and, and you guys and like i know you're i know you're on the way home from the tour right now because you guys have been like tweeting about it mm. um let me see if i can help you out and they like sketchy got me a seat like i showed up to the airport and the guy was like you don't have a seat and i was like um they sent me this confirmation thing and then he looked and was like oh weird you do kind of have a seat i don't know i can print you a ticket but you don't have like a that's not weird and i got a flight home but like i don't even have I mean, I guess it was because they followed up me because we were on tour and we were all tweeting stuff and whatever. Mm -hmm. But like that, that feels a little unfair it's, to everyone else who absolutely. can't get that kind of leverage. But yeah, also that's such a weird experience. It is. It really is. I don't do that anymore. I used to do it a lot. I would like tweet at companies all the time. I think the last time I did it was that Delta thing. And I made mm. a whole video about that, mostly just because it was so infuriating. I went to that airport, I think, four times. I remember. And I they drove told, you most you, of them. <laughs> you drove me there. That's right. And every single time they were like, you, don't worry. Your plane is taken off. You're going to get on this plane. I'd go through all the security. And then I'd call Bob and be like, hey, guess what? <laughs> yeah, well, that, was, that was the really sad part. The first couple of times I drove you and dropped you off and mm. then was leaving. It was like, all right, bud, see you. Yeah. I'll, you know, he's gone. And then like... Like the first time I was at home already and yeah, got yeah. the got to go. And then the second time I was like ten minutes away and you were like, "Hey, hey, can you pick me up?" <laughs> You're so mad. Yeah, yeah. But by that, by the by, the third time you dropped me off, we didn't even hug anymore. We'd just be like, "See you in five. See you in five. <laughs> I hope you leave. Don't come back." <laughs> Oh, uh, man, good. I think stuff. I've only ever tweeted at a company once, and I think it was like a veterinarian that was really just doing a shit job of taking care of our, I think it was our cat at the time. You tweeted at a vet. <laughs> that's not the same, man. I gotta say. Was it like a, a big corporate vet or something? That sounds like a personal what? attack, yeah. man. <laughs> what do you mean? No, it was a very Was it just with someone's personal account? No, no, it was actually the veterinarian, like the name of the the, the clinic itself. But uh, how, how big was this? I, for me to do that, like it was pretty bad because I I've I never really that. done that. But uh, I was livid mm -hmm. with how they were handling our cat post surgery. Yeah, that's fair. That's and they fair. they called me. They're like, we've never had more than like one social interaction a week. You tweeted us, and like our socials are blowing up. We didn't know how to turn off the notification noises. <laughs> So they were very eager to help me because I guess the five people that responded to their tweet, they had no idea how to handle it. <laughs> uh, <sighs> good well, times, good times. Bob, how do you abuse your power? Or what was the question? Uh, times I've got away with breaking the rules. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So mine... And what's the statute of limitations on this? I don't know. We're probably safe, it's, right, Mark? It's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. We, um, Mark and I lived together. I don't know if anyone's heard this story before. Mark and I lived together freshman year of college. What? Uh, probably news to a lot of people, but, um, yeah, so we lived together and at some point, well, I don't know. I don't think you did, but I, I had never had any alcohol before I went to college. Mm. And at some point I was, I was tainted. I was, I was turned. I was turned into a bad kid. <laughs> Don't do this. Uh, but at some point, 
I started like going out and, and drinking at parties and stuff for fun and uh, just a little bit, nothing crazy. But at some point, uh, Mark and I were like, you know what we should do? We should have our RA is pretty cool. He doesn't seem to care very much. We mm. should uh, we should have like a party, right? We should have a party in our dorm room. That's not allowed. You're not sure that we were our dorm was completely dry which it wasn't ever yeah. there were like parties constantly everywhere yeah. in the dorm room but yeah, yeah. you weren't supposed to do that uh, that was against the rules and uh but mark and i wanted to be cool and have a party and uh we had a friend i think it was Irvin. you remember Irvin? yeah Irvin. yeah mm -hmm. i'm not afraid to use his name because i know him and he would probably think it was cool that he was the older friend who bought alcohol but he was an older friend and he bought alcohol for mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. he's going to jail and, uh, calling the police <laughs> If he's going to jail, it's not for that. Um, mm. <laughs> oh no! The, look, I don't. I don't. Irvin. Irvin was an interesting dude, and we had some good times together. But he, I will. I will give you the image of him as he. I would describe him as my friend I know who is a professional, semi-professional poker player. And I don't know if he still is, but that was his main thing that he did to make money. Mm. So, if you've ever known anyone who's a semi-professional poker player. Well, me, I played poker once. They're wholesome people. You played poker once. No, he like wholesome. lived, would get Airbnbs in Vegas with buddies for three months and just go, go into the casinos and play poker for 12 hours at a time. Crazy stuff. Uh, but he hooked us up and uh, bought a bunch. We were going to have a big party. So we got like a case of Smirnoff Ices, the coolest drink there is. And, uh, and I, I think it was a case of some kind of beer, maybe Bud Light Lime or something. And, uh, and Mark and I had, I don't know if we hadn't really given it much thought or if this was just the plan we came up with, but the plan that we ended up going with for getting the, the drinks into our dorm room was, because you can't carry the cases in, obviously you're not supposed to have it. Mm -hmm. We were like, I know, we know, we've got backpacks. Mm -hmm. uh, backpacks are great for carrying lots of stuff, obviously. And uh, all you got to do is take all of the very clinky loud glass bottles of liquid out of the backpacks i mean out of the boxes and put them into the backpacks there's no problem with that it'll be fine then we'll just carry our backpacks nonchalantly in the lobby doors where you have to scan your card past the cameras wave and smile at the group of ras that are sitting in the lobby checking to make sure no one's doing anything that's breaking the rules or, or sketchy mm. um we were like, it'll be fine. The backpacks will be very discreet. I don't know if any of you have figured out what the problem is yet, but we didn't have anything to put in between the bottles. Uh. We didn't bring like shirts or towels. We put like 60 glass bottles into our two backpacks so that once it was on your back, every move you made <laughs> was like clink. Clank, clank, yeah. clanking. This is so not... funny because on TikTok just this morning, there's a sound that people are starting to use. That's literally that sound, bottles shaking around oh, in a God. backpack. <laughs> so people know what it is now. Sorry, continue. Why do you like put the bottles in a sock or something? I... How many socks knows? do you think we have? Yeah, we're you think we have 60 kids. socks? How like many socks beers did you have? I said like two, sixty. It, it was, was yeah, a lot. It was like two one thirty-six pack. pack. It was two, two backpacks, big boxes, oh, okay. big two backpacks. Back. Yeah. Turns out yeah, you they can fit. No problem. They fit. Yeah. And yeah, we were it like, wasn't hell a question yeah. of fitting in. Fit right in there. Well, it was a question of fitting in, but not in that way. Yeah. Everything fit inside the backpack, but like mm -hmm. literally, it was two of us. And there's a big staircase. We we did this in the back seat of the car. Irvin like dropped us off. There's a big staircase you have to go down to get. And I think on the walk to the staircase, we were probably like, oh, it's a little clinky. Just walk smoothly. But on the staircase, when you really have to take steps, it was like a it was like a comedy sketch. Like yeah. it was like a joke cacophony. Yeah. And I think we both realized like, ah, mm. shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't come up with anything. Like I, at this point, I'm just like, I don't know. Do we throw the backpacks in the dumpster and never come back? I don't do we give up. And Mar Mark, I don't know if you looked at me or what, but like right as we're getting to the door, Mark is just like, follow my lead. 
<laughs> and he like swipes his security card on the door, pulls it open, and as the door opens, as as we're about to be audible to the group of uh, people waiting inside, you know, guarding the lobby, Mark is just like, "Oh yeah, uh, do you remember that one time?" Like, well, and he just starts telling the loudest story I've ever heard. <laughs> And I was so, so I was so taken aback. I don't think I talked. I think I left you completely hanging. So the whole time uh, we're in the lobby, we're shuffling in like, like arms out, like don't, don't make clinks. And you're just like, yeah. And then he went to, and the car, and go, like, you're like trying to tell a story, and I'm just like terrified, staring at you. And the yeah. R, the RAs, if they heard the clinking, like. The, the sound of a person talking loudly does not mm. remove the sound of glass clinking. Well, my so problem were... was I was gesticulating as I was talking, <laughs> which just true. meant, did you know the clink, the thing, the, there was an opera at CCM tonight? <laughs> the, so those, so there's like a group of like five RAs sitting at the front desk just watching. More just RAs hearing. than there ever would be yeah. normally. Yeah. There were four of them. Why? <laughs> that's like extras. And yeah, they're just st st sitting there at the desk, standing, yeah. sitting, whatever. What they heard was a bunch of bottles of alcohol clinking because they fucking know what that sound is. Uh, and, and you talking loudly. Like, they watched us and they were like, yeah, hey, yeah, okay. Uh, like, they know, they knew. They knew. But we, yeah. we get, as soon as the elevator doors closed, I just remember, like, you stopped talking. We looked at each other and we're just like, perfect. No, you forgot one part in there. <laughs> wait, oh, wait, Because they were flabbergasted, but then they recovered as we, you are like panically pressing the elevator open button. <laughs> okay. And I'm still talking to you as if nothing's problem. And we both, for some reason, I, I think I remember we were facing the RAs talking to them. We weren't even like facing the elevator doors. And one of them starts <laughs> to come towards us as like to say something, you know, because this is obviously hilarious to them. And was it you or me that just started like, did you know there's an opera at CCM today? <laughs> <laughs> As we back into the elevator, and he, I just remember the expression on his face. He was so stunned. He didn't understand what was happening that we backed in the elevator. We were still talking as the doors were closing. Yeah, I think I might be going to the new clunk. And like, I think we fist bumped. I'm pretty sure that happened. I, that's what yeah, I remember. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> Man, you guys are good at playing it cool. I would have never suspected anything weird at all. Do you think they still tell that story? <laughs> like, do you think? I always wonder I if, like, so. the story is like in different ways. If we're even stupider from the outside. God. How many of those stories do you think they have? Oh my god. <laughs> well, I don't remember if this was the same party or not, but I know. So our our f guy on our floor, our RA on our floor, was was pretty chill. Mm. Um, and we didn't really do a lot of loud stuff, but I think it might've been that same, the aftermath of us smuggling all that in mm. because there was, there was a, we were had a bunch of people in our room. We were being super loud. We had like, the music was on. It was, we're, ha we're having a big party. And suddenly out of nowhere, there's a knock on the door. And like we had like rearranged the furniture in the rooms, so there was a bigger space. So there was like a desk kind of in front of the door that I think we had maybe been playing beer pong on or something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, but there was also a bottle of vodka sitting on the desk, which I, <laughs> I sincerely don't remember where that came from. <laughs> um, but like it was like a commercial, like it was sitting on the desk, label facing the door, and there was a knock at the door, and I was like, ah, somebody else must have heard. <laughs> go, Let me go let in this party guest. And I, like, scooch around the desk, pull, swing the door wide open, <laughs> and our RA is standing there and looking. He, like, the, the bottle of vodka is, like, four feet away from him. Mm. He just looks in, and it's just like, um... It's getting kind of it's kind of late. Can you guys just be a little bit quieter? <laughs> and just like sadly walked back down the hall to his room, just like, oh, fuck. I'm in charge of a bunch of morons. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> but like, I can only imagine how many stories those. If you work that job, you must have, especially in that dorm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Well, that's such a weird bag of people, right? It's just like you've got musicians, there was engineers. Well, there was engineer, me, and then you had that's, like business yeah. major on the other side. There was a few business yeah, majors. Right. It was such a yeah. weird smattering of people, like very diverse, you know, just <laughs> made for a Wait, good crowd. I'm having a brain blast. Oh. Mark, do you remember the 11th floor sock races? Is this a thing? 
Uh, you you'd in have on to this? describe it to me. I don't. It's, okay. The name isn't ringing a bell. I don't remember. I mean, I would say this is probably breaking the rules, but there there was one night where I remember the kid. He was real lanky. Mm -hmm. He was a uh, he was like a theater tech guy. He always had his belt with like a thousand keys and gaff tape, and and he wore crazy hats and stuff. Sure, sure. He was he was an interesting guy. And one night he he just rallied like our whole floor and was like, guys, I have an idea. It's the weekend. Let's get crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone's tripped down to boxer shorts or underwear and socks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call the elevator. One guy's going to hold the elevator and we're all going to pile into the elevator in our underwear and socks and nothing else. And then we're going to hit the top floor, which I think was the 11th floor. And then as soon as the as soon as the doors open, it's a race around the eleventh floor. You go out, you go to the left, you go to the far end, you loop like it's a circular dorm room, dorm building, right? So there's a race around, and uh, and then back on the elevator. Wait, and it's just a race. I do remember this. I don't remember being in our underwear. It was. I do remember Some this guys happening. Guys were definitely in their underwear because I have a very specific. Uh, vision of that. I, don't... I was not in my underwear. I volunteered to hold the elevator door because I was not down for that. Yeah, I. But I, I wanted to participate. I know this happened. Like I, I do remember this being a thing. I don't know if I participated. I don't remember seeing anybody naked, unless it's one of those things where you all ran past real quick, and I was just like, "What the fuck did I just see?" I have no idea. I don't think Maybe I participated. Maybe we did it multiple I... times. I know that there was a time where it was it was underwear and socks only because I remember because there were a lot of us in the relatively small and dangerous feeling elevator. I missed the dorm <laughs> experience, and I feel like I missed a lot. Yeah, yeah, you missed a lot, man. Yeah, you missed a lot. Yeah. Good times, good times. Only good things happen in the dorm. <laughs> Wait, I was, was Irvin. Was Irvin the guy who you whose life you ruined with Wow? No, 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 no that, that was, was uh, Aaron. Aaron. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, he was a percussion major who Mark introduced to Wow, and I think you. Yeah. I think it's fair and accurate to say you actually ruined his life with Key that. Key term was a percussion major. <laughs> yeah, he was a percussion major until he started playing WoW for 20 hours a day and developed carpal tunnel in both arms. Yeah. But goddamn, God he was dang. good at that game. He was good. That guy, unbelievable. <laughs> he was good at, like, all games. Remember, he had he had that laptop where he had a bunch of, like, classic emulators yeah, and just, like, yeah. hundreds of games. Yeah, and he had, he showed that one. I think it was called, is it, like, Mugen? Mugen, the the fighting that game sounds put, yeah the fighting put, like, game I remember Broly from Dragon Ball Z up against Sephiroth or whatever it was, uh, you can fight anyone. But yeah, no, he he was definitely like super into games stuff like that. But also then he got super into yeah. The reason we know that his life was ruined was because we lived with him freshman year, mm -hmm. and I saw him around maybe. A couple years because i went i was in the music school and like so we crossed paths we were in ensembles mm -hmm. but i didn't really f keep up with him but we you and i were out somewhere or were we like b-dubs yeah it was somewhere in public yeah, definitely b-dubs okay mm -hmm. and aaron was there and he like he came over or we went and said hey to him or whatever and he literally had like the carpal tunnel braces on both arms yeah and we talked to him uh -huh. And it was wow. He confirmed it was yeah, wow. It was wow. Uh, uh, I wonder what he's up to now. Probably wow. I don't know. Probably well, playing dead wow these days. right this moment. He's probably playing New World. Hmm. Probably playing Final Fantasy fourteen. Probably that one. Probably maybe that if one's... he was still on the train. Yeah, that's pretty popular. Actually. All right. Uh, I just want to let you guys know we passed $10,000 in terms of donations. Hell yeah. Hey. We, we long ago passed the reward limit for Q&A. Like, that got locked a while ago. Yeah, one minute, guys. One minute. Ten yeah, minutes no, ago. It, it's fine. It's They got they it, They wanted it. It's in. They got it in. Did you figure out how to get the questions? I have a way. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I don't, there doesn't seem to be a way for me to look specifically at like a list of questions, but I can scroll through the donations and see who submitted questions because there's a little star next to their donation. What? Oh. Shouldn't, shouldn't we, should, 
Should we no, talk like ask Tiltify? Or should they I'm should... sure I'm sure that there is a way, and I just don't know what it is. But this will work. Okay. Could I take a bathroom break before yeah, that? Yeah, you guys want to take a quick break, and then when we, we come back, a we'll do a little break. Q&A? Hey, everyone, I love that for us. everyone watching, there's a link down there. Now's your chance to donate to this great cause. Just a little bit. Just a little yeah. bit. Doesn't have to Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Starfish. Just chuck, a little starfish. Chuck a buck. Chuck a buck. Chuck a buck. Chuck a buck. You cannot donate negative amounts. It has to be positive amounts. Moderator is putting out the donation link. Chuck a buck. Chuck a buck. Chuck a buck. All right. Uh, we'll be back in uh, five. Type five. Type five. Five it is. Chet, I'm going to take a type five. I will be right back in just a moment. Check out the donation link. We just passed halfway to the goal. Can we get to 20,000 before the stream ends? Can you? Can we? Can they? You'll have to stick around to find out. Back in a, uh, back in a minute. Oh, hey, what's up? I'm back. I don't know what my friends are doing, but I'm sure they'll be back in a moment. Thank you all for donating, chat. I do I do feel like I need to say that. Thank you so much for donating. Anyone who's donated, if you're here, I mean, everyone watching in all the streams, thank you for donating, but it means a lot. I appreciate that. Um, we've raised an awesome amount of money. $10,482 so far. It's going to go towards outfitting an auditorium that's going to be used for musicals, plays, uh, band concerts, orchestra concerts, choir performances, show choir performances, assemblies, uh, guest guest appearances by who knows, play the uh, play play people. What are they called? Performers, actors, musicians, magicians, uh, uh, inspirational speakers. Olympians, who knows? I don't know because it's not going to happen yet. They have to figure out what they're going to do with all this money. Um, but it's going really well. I appreciate all the donations. Uh, if you cannot donate, I know there's always people who are in chat who are like, I can't afford to donate. I don't have extra cash. That's okay. That's totally fine. If you wouldn't mind, there are things you can do for free um, that are still a great help. If you could share the donation link, uh, if you could share the stream link, tell a friend about the the stream i don't know there's there's things that you can do even just talking about the need for funding education volunteering in your own community at your own school at your child's school whatever education is hugely important education is a part of the development of children in our country and around the world it's what teaches kids how to be social it's what teaches kids I don't know, how to learn, how to how to find, you know, the truth, why it's important to learn things and know things, even if, you know, maybe you're not going to use geometry in your everyday life. There is an importance in education that goes deeper than just learning the things and taking the tests. And uh, it's about enriching kids' lives and developing them, developing them into fully formed and uh, hopefully happy, healthy adults. Happy and healthy is a tough one to achieve. Both of those, almost unheard of, but uh, education is important. And this is a great cause to support, uh, to support the enrichment and education of students in the Winton Wood City School District. Uh, but there are lots of great ways for you to donate financially or get involved with your own time and your own efforts in your own communities. Um, teaching has always been, maybe not always, but in my lifetime, teaching has been a hard career. People who teach do it because they want to, for some reason, because you don't get paid enough. You don't get the money that you that you need or deserve to give your kids the education that they need and deserve. Um, you may not get the opportunities. You may have rules and restrictions placed by your administration or by the district or by political people or who knows. There's all kinds of pressures on teachers about what they're teaching, how they're teaching, and now in, in you know, today's age, more than ever, teachers have to accommodate a wide range of learning styles, which is great. You want the kids to get what they need. Any, any student should get what they need in order to learn and develop and have a, a fair shot at, uh, you know, an equitable shot at getting a good education and getting set up to succeed in their life. But the te teachers are not getting a lot of assistance with that. 
Teachers aren't getting any more money, but are being asked to facilitate a wider range of needs from their students. Teachers aren't getting any more resources or classroom assistance or anything. They're not getting any additional, any of that, but they're being asked to do more and more. In the last couple of years, teachers have been asked to teach remotely, which is something they may not have any experience with, may not have been trained in any serious way how to deal with. They're learning how to use Zoom or Windows, whatever, Microsoft Teams or all these things. They're learning how to how to connect with kids in a, in a new way that it's even harder to connect and keep focus and keep kids engaged when all they're doing is staring at a screen and, and watching PowerPoints and whatever. It's a hard thing to be a good teacher. It takes a lot of sacrifice and dedication. And in any way that you can, that we can, we should support education in our schools, in our communities. Uh, and this is a great way to do it. And uh, well, tons of you have. Thank you for the $10,681 you've donated so far. But like I said, there are lots of ways to get involved. If you don't have the cash to donate, you could share this or you could find a way to get involved in your own community. Um, it's a worthy cause. Education at large is a worthy cause to get involved with, spend time and money to support and enrich because it will only pay dividends in the next generation of kids that grow up to be hopefully happy, healthy, well-educated adults who continue to make the world better than it was uh, when they were kids. That's the goal. It's hard to be optimistic in times uh, like we've had the last couple of years, but uh, I feel like this is a place where there could still be optimism. The next generation can have more opportunities, new opportunities, can, can do more and do better than we have and generations before have because they can have our support if we offer to them. Anyway, my friends are back. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi there. What were you guys doing? I was uh, shaking and crying around. Yeah, I've seen that in chat some. Seems like some people are shaking and crying today. Mm-hmm. Going around. Is that, a, is, that a, is that a meme or is that a thing, a real thing? I don't know, but it sounds really dumb. Mm. People just upset today. That also sounds really dumb. It's a Sunday and we're doing a charity stream. People should be really happy. Mm. How dare you be upset? <laughs> yeah, get over your life. Ours is more important. Donate money. Yeah. You should donate though. We're raising money. There's a link in chat or in the panel next to the stream or below the stream. I don't know how it works. Mm -hmm. But you should click it. There's a and link donate. Being provided in the chat right now. We're currently at ten thousand seven hundred and forty one dollars. It's true. Megan just donated twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. Alana the Lioness just donated one dollar. Anonymous donated four dollars and two cents, which I thought was gonna be four twenty, but isn't. Hmm. Mm, good try. Anyway, should we answer some like Q and A questions or whatever? I guess. Yes, there's probably only a couple of those, right? Uh, how many could there be? That's fine. How many What's are there? Ten thousand divided by twenty-five. It's like ten, right? I, I, honest to God, looked and I, I can't find a way. I can't. <laughs> there's, there's got to be a list somewhere, right? There's got to be a list. One would there's think. There's got to be a list, right? Hmm. Maybe in the back end. Have you looked in the back end? Have you looked in the back rooms? Uh, the back rooms? Yeah. I deactivated it. It was already deactivated. Uh-huh. And said manage. What if I go to manage? manage What's under that tab? Manage. manage. That's just, that's a list of, oh, oh, you know what? I could export donations as an, as a, yeah, as a file. And then, oh, I don't have, I don't have like a, I don't have like a spreadsheet thing on this computer because it's a video Google, games computer. Google Sheets, you could go to Google Sheets. Oh, that's true, that's true, that's true. This guy, Sheets, if I type in Google Sheets, why doesn't it just take me to Google Sheets? While you're doing that, I'd like to take a moment to promote my new podcast, Go My Favorite Sports Team, with me and Tyler. Hey, do you want to know about sports? Yeah. No one's stopping? Hell yeah. Do you want to know about sports? 
Yeah, keep going. This is great. I love this. No, yeah, I love me. your self destruction by all means. Do you want to know about smorts? 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 <laughs> smorts. <laughs> Do you like smores? Do you like sports? Sm well, like let me tell you about smorts. You go to you go to uh, you go to Spotify or someplace like that and type in "Go My Favorite Sports Team." You're gonna find our new podcast. A video to promote it was supposed to come out on Thursday. I got lazy. I was busy with other mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. It's coming. And hey, you can go listen to it right now. Why not? Right? Can I tap into your sports expertise? Yeah. What's up? I learned a lot. Can you tell me the Bengals Who Day chant? It's you uh, know your city's team. Who day? Who day? Who day? Think they gonna beat them Bengals? I honest to God cannot close even enough. open no. a file. How do I do this? That's, that's, you know what? I'll, I'll give you credit. That's close you, enough. That's close enough. You got to go to like one word off. Google Sheets, new file, import, and then in the far right tab of import oh, is up. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Got it. Yep. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh-huh. There's a bunch of uh, private personal information on my screen right now. Nothing in this file about the reward. Okay. Mark, do you know who the Bengals are playing in the Super Bowl? They are playing the L.A. Rams. Do you know where the Rams were prior to being in L.A.? I don't know. <laughs> Why would I know that? Because <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. Why would football. I know that? They were in football. Who cares? They were, they were St. In... Louis. I was just I was just tapping into your sports knowledge. They, but you know, I... they were from St. Louis beforehand. Wow. Oh, he got it. I, got I can't it. believe it. Right. Yeah, let me tell I, you. <laughs> Learned a lot. I, I've got a. I'm just gonna. I've got a system that works. We're gonna do the Q and A and the system that works. All okay. right. Okay. All right. It's Q and A uh, time, everybody. It's Q and A time. Distractible, everyone. Mark's new podcast, Distractible. Go, my favorite sports team. My favorite sports team is Distractible. So, Hell yeah. um, uh, the first question is from Lucian, and it is what do y'all think about frogs? They're very riveting. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh that's that's what we collectively think about frogs i don't have anything to add to that yeah i, got I don't know else. what they thought was gonna happen sable flag <laughs> wants to know if we saw the nft bros who bought a copy of an old dune art book for three million dollars and now think they own dune as an ip oh uh, i did see uh, this the book is apparently worth 25 grand on its own, but these guys are idiots who think they own Dune now, I guess. I I kind of glanced over this. I try to ignore most of these things, but I did see this. But there was some other detail about how, like, they don't think they own Dune, but it's still just as stupid the other reason. What was it? Let me look into this. I don't know. I see the I letters mean... N, F, and T together, and I just turn on something else. <laughs> uh. Spice DAO made waves when they triumphantly tweeted about the recent acquisition of a rare art book, Jodorowsky's Dune, the guidebook to an ambitious but ill-fated film adaptation of Dune. These Spice heads had big plans to convert the book into NFTs, burn the physical copy, and adapt the story into an animated series. There's just one problem. Little did they know they don't actually own the copyright to Dune. All they yeah. own is one very expensive book. Okay, so you might be right. So they about literally that. Yeah. bought a book of art and were like, and we'll make this into a show because we own it. <sighs> how how can so this is the thing. NFTs are a bunch of the NFT culture is a bunch of like bros who are like, oh, this is the future, it's web 3.0 and all this stuff. This is all about ownership. The blockchain, the blockchain as a like a form of of ownership and proof of ownership. How can people who are in that world not so fundamentally not understand basic copyright law? Well, How did that happen? Why would they understand basic copyright? The only reason I that know basic copyright game. law is know. because Therefore I started they own YouTube. copyright law. Yeah, exactly. It supersedes <laughs> it. It supersedes. It's decentralized. Therefore, they bought an NFT of the Constitution, so they thought they would be above the law. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they own it. Uh -huh. They own the law. Uh-huh, yeah. I actually bought an NFT of a uh, picture of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, so I thought I could just make whatever law I wanted now. Yeah. The Supreme Court, that's me. Highest highest court in the land. Quid pro quo, you are on the Supreme Court, if you own that. Quid pro <laughs> quo. I own the NFT to that word, so I know how to use it correctly. Yeah, obviously. Obviously. 
I this only strengthens my belief that NFTs are a scam and I hope they go away. It's not right. a scam. Good bro. question. Good future. question. Great good question. question. Great question. Good All right, question. here's a here's a Deese question. Marissa Exley. Mm-hmm. That's not how that's spelled, but there's a phonetic pronunciation. Thank you. Wants to know what grade had the largest number of our favorite memories. You have, a, you have a K through twelve. Aww. That's not a grade though. If it's specifically, Babe. yeah, no, it's thirteenth grade. If it's if it's actually about grade, um, just by pure quantity, I guess senior year of high school. Because a lot happened in senior year at a high school. Freshman through junior was kind of floater years. I don't even remember sophomore and junior at all. Like, I got, like, no gonna, memories out of there. I'm going to go with freshman year of high school. And part of that's because I was I declared war on one of my teachers. And it was fun. <laughs> Hell yeah. It was the only time I ever did it. I remember uh, that. You told that story. What, did you tell that on the podcast or something? Probably, yeah. I remember that. <sighs> Sounded very spiteful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fun time. Fun time. <laughs> oh, yeah. We had, we had a good time. I think mine is probably senior year of high school, too. I mm. My first three years of high school, I thought I was going to be a football player. That didn't really pan out. I don't know what to do. Senior year, I uh, I got a girlfriend for the first time in my life. That was pretty cool. And uh, it was a good year. I had friends for the first time in my life. That's good. That's good. Uh, that's only kind of true. I have more friends. How about that? <laughs> okay. Um, that was a good year. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Pew Pew's question is all lowercase favorite movie. Jurassic Park. Ratatouille. Pulp Fiction. Ratatouille? Ratatouille. I love Ratatouille. The man who just learned about tasting and chewing food not six months ago's favorite movie is about a rat that can taste and chew his food? Yep. Is that a new development, or have you been a Ratatouille fan since before you did that? No, I've been a Ratatouille fan for a while. I don't know what it is about the movie. It's it's not so much that I think it's the best movie ever made. I can just watch that nonstop, and I get the same, like, it's a very, like, pleasant, comfortable movie for me. Because, you know, you get, like, all the food and, like, the warmth of it, and you get, like, the uh, Paris and, and all the, the beautiful architecture, and it's, like, really well made, and I like the music. I, it's just, like, a very... Const- consistently entertaining movie for me. It is. Yeah. This is, that, I think you know what I you know what movie. I would compare to that? Not what? necessarily my favorite movie, but another one that's like that for me. Kung Fu Panda. It's always good. People make fun of Kung Fu Panda. I think I it's a very it. solid movie. It's very good. It's the fr- uh, the the sequels and all the spin-off stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. Eh, oh, it's fine. The first Kung Fu Panda great movie Mm -hmm. always good to watch if it's on the airplane if i'm on a flight and kung fu panda's on there or ratatouille Mm -hmm. both of those are instant yeses for sure i get that i like uh my favorite disney movie is still going to be great mouse detective where the mice get drunk and then they misbehave and the rat feeds them to a cat that's That's probably the best one that's good but we didn't say disney movie well i saw this Jurassic park is my favorite movie best disney movie is great mouse detective Ah, i'm giving a bonus answer because i want you guys more have you guys seen Encanto? No. I have not. It's good. You should watch it. I've heard. It's good. It's good. I've not had the uh, Next question is from Floppy Bacon underscore Buster. Uh, what is the okay. scariest thing that you have ever experienced? Being hit by a semi. Ah, it always comes back to the car. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's the only time in my life I've really had my life flash before my eyes and thought I was going to die. So, uh. Yeah, definitely that. That's fair, I guess. I don't know. I haven't really had any scary experiences. I'm pretty safe. Uh, I've had quite a few scary experiences. Um, most of them are very serious and not fun to talk about. So I'll just say I've had a few to pick from. Yeah. Mine is maybe I had a car, a very minor car crash one time where I, I was like sleepy. I, it was just a bad decision. And I like changed lanes into a car, but the car that I, that hit me was also going like super fast. Mm. 
-hmm. Like it was one of those things where when we, we both got out of our car and pulled over and I was like, Oh God, shit, this is my fault. And the lady got out of the car and was like, um, I just, I, I don't know how that happened. I just looked down for a second. I just like, she was going like double the speed limit or some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I had forgot my phone. Somehow I left the house. I was going to just like pick up food or something and I didn't have my phone. And so like the police got there and I'm just like, uh, Mandy is waiting for me to bring home Wendy's or something and she, I have no phone or way to contact her and I asked the cop to borrow his phone and I call her a couple times and she doesn't know that number so she's like ah, I'm not answering that that's a spam call mm -hmm. so but I didn't leave a voicemail because I'm an idiot so it wasn't like the crash but the the subsequent stuff of like trying to tell Mandy I'm on the live and then her being like what the hell is going on that was not so good Good memories. Good memories. Good memories. Yeah, fun Good stuff. question. Uh, Paige Peterson wants to know what our favorite Pokemons is. Uh, Shiny Charizard, Mewtwo, Alakazam. I don't know. Those are all my favorites. I, you got uh, one, Mark? You big I, Pokemon? I mean, I don't like Pokemon, so I don't really mm. Which one's your favorite, favorite of the things you hate? Yeah. Which one's your least hated? How about that? Uh... I. Uh, you seem like a Badoof kind of guy. A Badoof? Oh wait, I've heard of a Badoof. Uh, yeah. That's no, not Madoof. Badoof. Oh, that one's cute. That's cute. It's a little beaver. That's ah, pretty cute. I'll go with that one. Yeah. I like Trubbish. He's a pile <laughs> of garbage. What about Garbador, the evolution? <laughs> Is that real? Yeah. Garbador? Yeah. Oh my god, Garbador. Oh, oh my god. Oh. What a terrible Gar existence. Is he a mix of garbage and a troubadour? Why is he Garbador? I don't know. Trash spilling out of a large torn garbage bag. Yes, yeah, okay, Garbodor is my favorite Pokemon. Mm. He's got like cigarette butts and rope. <laughs> Wait, I got cigarette butt fingers and candy I, eyeballs. I found a website that's favorite Pokemon picker, and I think it lets you choose one, and it'll like sort out which one's your favorite. I like this Gearbox guy. That's There's also fun. a Gigantamax Garbodor version. Cute. He has a dildo finger. <laughs> there, but that's Look at his there. hand. I picked some. Okay. What this is? What am I looking at? It looks like a intestine and a. It looks like a. It looks like a placenta and a fetus. What I pick it? I'm picking it. What's I don't know that, what that is. What's it Look called? At the hips on this one. What the hell? What? Is weird. Ah, I don't know. Ah, There's a lot more Pokemon. I don't recognize. What's it, what's any it of called? These. What's it called? Mark? I don't have a name. I'm, I'm going through the quiz. It's I'll just let a you know picture. when I'm done. Okay. Hang on, hold on, hold on. And dildos. I'm serious. It looked like a, a placenta and a fetus. Like it looked, it looked like afterbirth. Is all I'm saying. That teacup's pretty cute. What the fuck are you looking at? I'm looking at the Pokemon favorite Pokemon picker. Uh huh. Uh -huh. That's what it is. This guy's like a tree. I don't know. That's just a fish. What is that? Can you send us a picture of the placenta? I'm not, not the there anymore. Let me go through the quiz and I will show you everything. I can't Ooh. believe that's a sentence I just asked out loud. Oh, I like him. What is with this guy? Oh, I like Purple Pony. Purple Pony. Well, that's a yeah. different... That's not Bidoof. Oh, it does if I hover over it. That's a Bibberal. I don't like him. I don't like yeah. him. Oh, I like that. That's good. Pass. Oh, this is a fun game. How many uh, of these are there? You're blocking a couple of them, Bob. Uh, cool, I'll, I'll move it over. Just let me know oh when you find Oh my god, there's a Bob. cat. That's just a cat. I'll take it. That's just a cat. It's just a cat. <laughs> oh, I found the tree guy. Yeah? Oh, oh it's a grubbin. hippo. Oh, it's I a like hippo. Grubbin. What the hell is Magnezone? What happened? Magnezone? <laughs> well, I know Magnemite and Magneton. It was Magnezone. Oh, that's the third evolution. This one's got like a dress. Lil Lilligant. Wait till you see Little the Galarian Vulpix and all. They man, they've changed everything. Oh my God, who are you, Whalmer? Huh. What the hell is you, Conkledur? <laughs> <laughs> His name is Conkledur with two Con R's. Wow. 
<laughs> it carries around big stone uh, dick things. This one's just a purple skunk with weird oh, eyes God. named Stunky. Stunky? <laughs> Stunky? Oh, it falls into Stunk Tank. No, the hell it does not. <laughs> it does, too. Stunk Tank. Oh, it man. Does. That one's cute. <laughs> Why is it evolve into Stunk Tank? And why does he have an emo tail? I don't know. That is another <laughs> what tree. What in the hell How is many happening? How trees Stunk are there? Tank. This, is just a, this is just a koala called Kamala. <laughs> oh, what? That seems lazy to me. Uh, There's also Stun Fisk. Oh, boy. And Palpitoad Krogunk. Crow Man, you gunk. guys are really scraping the bottom here. Crow gunk. Oh, this Those one's just got a the newer on ones. Ass. <laughs> they gave up a while ago. Oh my god. I am so not far into this quiz. Uh, yeah, the, the little thing at the bottom progresses a tiny sliver at a time. This is a penguin with his head frozen. What is that? Oh, there's a tree with legs that's called a zirka tree. I'm just gonna oh, have to. Did you see the ice cream cone called vanillish? I just gotta do one of those videos <laughs> no. where I look at all these no. and try to come up with a name for it. Cause, good God. Ah. Uh. uh. Oh, what is this one? Blacephalon. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I love it. This All one right. looks like a sloth snake called Silicobra. I'm just, I'm just gonna skip through the. I'm it. I there's six hundred and two more to get. No, I'm done. Oh jeez. I'm done. Thank you. I'm done. Okay. Okay. Oh, gray, uh, gray ninja is apparently one of the top ten favorite Pokemon of the year. Uh not as good as Green Ninja. The third Thank you. Of Froki. Oh sure. That's an, I don't know. Next my, question. My favorite is still Trubbish. Moving on. Oh, no. What was it? Grobor? Gigantamax Gar Garbador. Gigantamax Garbador. There we go. That's my new favorite Pokemon. Uh, Avtu wants to know, what was our most favorite childhood memory? Uh, <sighs> spending time at my grandparents' cabin, like out on their pontoon on the river slash lake. I guess just going into the woods with my brother. Those are those good memories. Good times. I think the lake or candy uncle, one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> I remember my, uh, my, my uncle right before he mysteriously exploded. My uh, uh, my favorite is probably summer vacations in northern Michigan. Going like lakes and like uh, boats and fishing and, you know, stuff. That sort of stuff. Uh, this is not a question, but Kick Club says that Kick Club Productions has a surprise for you. I guess we'll see about that. For who? Uh, you. us in general. You, you know? Okay. Uh, uh Untrusted Life asks, Well, I put it in... I put it into Google Translate, nothing came out, so I'm really unsure about that one, but... Mm, okay, okay. Yes, I guess would be my answer. I'm going to go with no. I gave my answer. <sighs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Kit Club actually did ask a question as well. What is one of your most life-changing moments, like a light switch that changed the course of your entire life? Doesn't have to be serious. For example, Mark Chu's food now. I mean, I guess that would be one. That's a pretty big one for you, honestly. It is. It has really changed my experience with food. Um, That party where Mark and I talked about YouTube and stuff before Drunk Minecraft. Hmm. Uh, the choice to go to law school was a big one. The main change that that created for me was that I have a crushing amount of student loans, but that's a pretty big impact, I guess. Um, I guess just like deciding to do something on my own post that surgery. Not the one we were talking about earlier, but like before I did YouTube. When I yeah, I mean, it kind of worked out. Things. 
I think you should revisit graphic novels. I, I've thought about it. I have a few ideas. You could still finish that degree. I could. I could. What do I got to do to get an honorary degree? Just give me one. Just I'd probably like, donate hey, a I bunch of money to a university. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're probably right. Uh, Issa wants to know, how's Chica? That seems like a Mark question, I gotta be honest. Oh, I'll answer that one. Uh, Chica's doing great. Thank you. Well, that really worked <laughs> out. If that's the answer, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm glad that that's the answer. I, I hope Chica does great forever. Mm -hmm. uh, Mumbles wants to know, what are our favorite flowers and why? Well, you know us. You know we've got favorite flowers locked in, ready to go. I like sunflowers. Pretty cool. Um, hmm. I'm going to go with the ones that make chamomile tea because I got to pluck a few of them in Dying Light too, and I really like seeing those chimoles. Interesting. I like tulips because they remind me of Holland, Michigan, and Dutch things in general. Oh, I could have gone with dandelion. My curative dandelions. Yeah, is true. But you do know that it's called a chamomile, like the the flower. You yeah, no, it's Chimomile not the Millie. plant that makes the tea. It is, it is. chamomile. Chimomile. It has a spoon on Chimomile. one of the leaves, and it stirs your tea for you. Chamomile. Yeah. Chamomile. Chamomile. <laughs> uh, known as the 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 camel mile. Uh huh. Chamomile. Chamomile. Yeah. Uh, Bismuth wants to know who was our favorite teacher. Well, that seems like skirting the whole rules of the poll that we did, but I guess we could answer that. Hmm. Mrs. Bockledge. You Why? guys didn't know. Oh, I yeah. mean, she was just great. What happened? I, I went to this, like, uh, this private Christian school when I was, like, kindergarten to third grade, I believe, and it was Mrs. Bockledge all the way through. And she was just very nice, you know. Nothing but good memories. And then I went to public school, and that was a nightmare. Damn. Very different. Mine would be Dr. Keller. Mm -hmm. He was my band director for the first three years of high school and my trombone teacher privately. Uh, he was a good role model and a great band director. And I learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't think he'd be proud of what I'm doing right now. But oh, come on. I tried. It's not your fault. What about you, I forget his name, but I had a, uh, a philosophy of law professor who uh, kind of reminded me of like a not angry, sober Russell Crowe. But uh, he was <laughs> Wait, really what? smart. Are you... What? You know, Russell Crowe. Always angry but... and drunk? Wait, what? Well, no, he's not always angry and I drunk. I feel like this oh, could be slanderous at some point. Here. I'm not speaking about Russell Crowe so much as my professor. But you you didn't talk about your professor. You talked about Russell Crowe. Okay. Predominantly. My interpretation of Russell Crowe is like the. I only see stories about him, like whenever he throws his phone at people and stuff. I don't know Russell Crowe. He's probably a great guy. But I only know what the media portrays him as, all right? I, that's all I've got. You are but the this media professor kind of looked like Russell Crowe. He had like a nice voice. Like Russell Crowe's got a cool voice. He had a cool voice like Russell Crowe. But the professor was really smart. He was uh, tenured and he was like on, about to retire. And he was he just did not give a shit. So he would talk about whatever he wanted to. And it was usually something in interesting. Uh, I really enjoyed the classes and I still felt like I learned a lot. It was a good class. This is not a Russell Cl Cl Close slandal. Okay, he's fine. <clears throat> I said that exactly how I wanted to say it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I've got one I can answer for all of us. Great, please do. Chloe wants to know if we'd ever come to England to do a meet and greet. We already did, sorry. Ah, got him. Uh, I'm trying to scroll through. I, I was going to make the cutoff one o'clock for the questions. I'm trying to scroll through and find a, a real banger to end on. I like this one. Uh, I've lost the name of the person who asked it. Uh, but someone asked what General Justinian asked, what do you think is the funniest or one of the funniest things each of the other one of you has said? Said? Uh, I would say maybe let's phrase it as what what is like the funniest joke 
uh, or thing that has happened that you have found the funniest but of of us between us, if you know what I mean. I remember when we were doing Drunk Minecraft, and I feel like Mark had a spree of spilling shit on his various keyboards, and he had to pull out the tiny fucking keyboard and then bitched about it the whole rest of the recording. And at, oh, even, yeah. like, if I was sober, I would have laughed, but since we've been drinking, it was, like, a million times funnier. And I just remember, like, giggling my ass off the whole time he was on that fucking tiny keyboard. Uh, for Bob... It's either God Bob's fridge, man. That distractible episode's got to be up there. But also, I remember when we were doing speedrunners, and I ran the wrong way and died, and you <laughs> laughed for like, I mean, you laughed for such a long time, and you have like the best laugh. And I remember like editing that, and I would just listen to your laugh for like thirty minutes. That was really funny. <laughs> ah. It's hard to pick one thing. Okay, this is more of a thing that you do, Mark. But uh -huh. since we've been doing the podcast especially, the the th the like introductory clips that you make, the like I stingers. Oh, I yeah. turned around and he was right behind me. All of all of those always fucking make me laugh way too uh, long. I've been meaning to make more. I did have those fun are, with those, and then I fell out of it. Those are good. Because <laughs> I was going to, my whole bit was just going to be, so I was going to come up with a nonstop. I'll get better about it. I'll get better about it. But those are gems. Uh, for you, Wade, it's really subtle. You make a lot of, like, pun kind of jokes and, like, word wordplay jokes, and those that's not a thing I find, like, funny all the time, but there's a certain tone that you take where it's like you know you expect people are going to be mad at you or something like the way that you say it you'll just say it kind of like no oh. and you know she didn't mean to or something it's the tone the way that you say it it's like such a defeated thing but you just bust it out at the most random times it always makes me laugh what was that scream <laughs> did you hear that i heard that i don't what, know what, what was that i didn't you hear, hear a scream call? no what's happening you right did, in the middle of right your as sentence, you were talking there was like a oh! <laughs> like what? What the? Did you play really it? Were you were you playing sudden. a clip on your end or something? No, what I'm playing music. That? Did someone jump in this Discord and just? Oh shit! Looked, I'm in the wrong I, place. I, I looked at both of you, like trying to figure out which one of you was getting stabbed. Yeah, I was like, what the hell? No, who I was that? My stream. Did you? It was loud. My stream heard it. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was loud. All of us heard it. <laughs> Ooh, uh, yeah, that was scary as fuck, whatever it was. <laughs> what is it happening? Like someone was being murdered in the background. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Which one of you got replaced by an alternate just now? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I think it was Bob because he's the only one that didn't hear it. Yeah, apparently. Uh, I'm kind of concerned. I don't. <laughs> anyway, uh, my funny but I it's it, yeah, it's hard to contextualize ways. But I was I was watching this clip recently, and and someone made this small animation. It was just like I forget what he was talking about. Like I saw he invented Sue. Like every time you do an exclamation like that, it just fucking always makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that even about? Do you guys remember that? I, I don't remember the context. What, what, like what a, was it? What did he say? I don't I don't know what he was talking. It was from one of the early episodes. Of Distractable. It was like it's already invented. Sue. It's just oh. like the way he screams that. <laughs> it's just so fucking funny to me. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, mocking the people that respond to all of our podcast episodes like there was already a movie about this oh, you know, right. it was called it was called E.T. it came out in the 80s yeah whatever you're genuinely mocking something like you know like you make a lot of jokes and stuff but whatever it's like you're actually in like not you're you're mad about it but just like you're fucking too engaged into it it's very <laughs> funny and Bob just uh, recently on an episode we recorded uh, this past week um <clears throat> Um, that we're not i'm not gonna spoil but just like <laughs> when things go wrong for bob i <laughs> in the same way as bob's fridge but it's just like very funny no. and i can't wait for you guys to hear this episode because it's oh so, yeah wait wait i got a quote from bob so i don't know if good. i'm supposed to read this or not so good um bob's bob's text to us after we recorded that episode was i'm not gonna lie I don't know if I've ever felt like such an idiot. I might never recover from this. <laughs> I, I still like. I felt personally 
embarrassed uh, for like the next few days really intensely about that like i moped around the house i still feel that uh-huh the impact of what happened yeah it, i'm in like a funk right now from the <laughs> the level of idiocy that i put on display for you and is gonna be published yay it's so, see it. but it's so funny it's so uh, funny it, was, it made me laugh so hard uh, well, the last like 10 or 15 minutes is just mark and i laughing while bob is struggling to uh, exist. Uh, yeah it's really bad. No, no, it's not really bad. It's very funny. Very funny. <sighs> well, uh, amazingly, that was not all the questions that we got. Shocking. But I really honestly did scroll through quite a few, and I tried to pick some bangers and only some fillers that were not that good of a question. But uh, I hope you got your question answered. If you didn't, I'm sorry, chat, but there were a lot of them. Mm. There's a big, that's a, I scrolled all the way down. That goes on forever. Mm. Turns out you guys really enjoy that sort of thing. I didn't know that, or I may have planned differently. <laughs> Who could have known? Who could have known? But anyway, we've raised $11,838.56, according to the thing on my screen. Mm -hmm. Um... Thank you so much to everyone who's donated. We are raising money for the Winton Woods Educational Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization that supports the Winton Woods City School District, which is a school district in a community located north of Cincinnati. Uh, they provide funding for uh, educational enhancements. I don't know. That's a weird way to put it. They don't fund anything that the district funds. There's no overlapping of funds, but they fund after school things, extra assemblies like the Shakespeare in the Park Company coming and doing a performance. They fund enhancing and engaging opportunities for students that they might not otherwise get because money is tight. I don't know if you've heard money is tight in the school systems these days. Um, but it's a great organization and uh, it's supporting a great cause. Educate. I was doing this before I came back from the break. I was talking to my chat. I was saying that if, if, there's always people who feel bad or say in chat they feel bad, they can't donate, whatever. There are ways you can support the stream without donating. You can share the donation link. Uh, you can you can uh, talk about this cause with your friends, to your family, to anyone who might listen. But you can also get involved. Education is everywhere, and it's important everywhere. This is one specific place where you can help. Uh, but your own community, if you have kids that are in school, I'm sure there are ways you could volunteer. If you live in a community where there are schools, which you probably do, uh, you could probably volunteer to assist in lots of ways to support and enhance education for kids, your kids or your neighbor's kids or whoever in your community. Kids are the future. It's like the corniest shit that anyone's ever said, but it's true. The next generation of kids need to be better than us. If the world is gonna to continue to progress, we need to be making smarter humans, more empathetic humans, more well-adjusted and, and inspirational. And uh, the next generation probably will be better. I mean, it probably is because the Zoomers right now are doing all kinds of crazy stuff as compared to my generation. But education is part of what forms the, that next generation of kids. It is hugely important that kids get all the opportunities that we can make available to them and that teachers and educators, administrators get all the support we can offer because they're doing as much as they can more than ever before right now with the same or less resources. Teachers are being asked to accommodate a wider range of learning uh, uh, learning styles and implement more different techniques and, and more varied lesson plans and approaches and given the same or less resources. And how is that? That doesn't make any sense. And as districts are being asked to do more with without giving more money or better facilities or more support, they're being asked to cut budgets and still provide top quality education. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. Being a teacher is a lot. They need all the help and support that you can offer. So if you can donate here, like Mark did. Mark, thank you for the thousand dollars. No, of course. Uh, if you could donate here, that's great. This is a great cause, and you know exactly where your money is going to go. Um, but there are lots of ways in your community, in your children's schools, uh, wherever that you could get involved that don't require you to make a financial donation. You you have time and effort. Hopefully, you have some free time that you could dedicate to trying to help ensure that kids get every opportunity that we can give them. Mm. Well said, well spoken.
And remember Bob, in the Discord. Uh, oh, go ahead, Mark. Well, I was just going to say the link to go to the donation page is being posted in chat or down below my stream here, right down there in the boxes. You can go there, check it out. Diltify, we use it a lot. Uh, feel free to make whatever donation you can. Go ahead. Wait. I was just going to let Bob know if he wants to hear the random scream we heard. I put a clip in, in the Discord there. Somebody in your uh, chat clipped it, Mark, so. <laughs> I, like people, six or seven seconds and there's just like a ah! and those people on my end were saying that it like was you know uh, audible in your stream but not in my stream <laughs> was it was it something that like played in one of the many tabs that I have because I don't know I heard it too though I'm, oh, like, okay. I'm not yeah I heard it as well <laughs> what what is that oh it sounds like oh. a like a shitty microphone something or other it sounds like yeah, a I little someone the xlr was like xlr and something to us like i thought when you guys pressed a button that did that mm, no not me uh super weird maybe discord crossed a stream like the operator who plugs the cable into the different discord channels accidentally <laughs> plugged us into like a <laughs> A rage match in some <laughs> Call of Duty game, you know? <laughs> that's it's weird so that you weird. and I heard it, but Bob didn't. It's very strange. I know. That's yeah, the most strange. concerning part to me. Yeah. I, you guys were like, what was that sound? Whoa, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I didn't hear I didn't hear nothing. <laughs> well, it sounded exactly like that to me, too. Yeah. Weird. Very strange. <clears throat> anyway, consider making a donation. We're at $13,235. Our goal is $20,000, which is totally achievable with your help. Also, I have, I, have some, I have some articles that I've wanted. I've been sitting on and I want to talk about for a while. All right. We can keep talking. Yeah, I mean, at I, some point we transition to the game, but honestly, we can do I just, I just wanted to get through real quick because they're, like, they're, they're great. And do, I it. Just, okay. do it. Okay. The first one is, is Nick Cannon issues apology to the five mothers of his children. Have you heard about? Sure. Have you no. heard about Nick Cannon's rampage? Yeah, he has like um. He said he was going to become celibate after like his eighth kid or something, right? This man is unstoppable. Like he has eight kids with five different mothers. He like had a baby shower for one just as another one was was born. Like he he is unstoppable. This man. He's going to be the Genghis Khan of fathers in a few generations. Good every, God. Every, in the future, everyone's DNA will be able to be traced back to Nick Cannon. <laughs> he was the Nickelodeon guy, right? Yeah. And uh, it, it's just like, it's it's the 41-year-old dad acknowledged he quote-unquote failed earlier this week when he shared the news that he was expecting his eighth child. God yeah, dang, dude. That. Yeah. Has he learned he how that about. happens yet? Or? No, I don't think anyone's told him. <laughs> he's, he's like, he's just like, I keep getting them pregnant. I don't know, man. I think it's all a big scheme by Nickelodeon. He is on there. Nick is made for kids. And they're having him make kids. So that way there's always viewers for Nickelodeon. He's not on Nickelodeon anymore. Yeah, no. His main gig is like hosting, what, he hosts America's Got Talent, no, I think? No, it's, it's that masked singer. Doesn't he do that one? Does he? I thought that was I thought that was hosted by or no, that Ken Jong is a judge on that one. Yeah. But he hosts the other one, the lip syncing one that's like a spin-off of the I don't know. He's not on Nickelodeon anymore, that's for sure. Not hasn't been for a while. Yeah. All of your Nickelodeon data is very out of date, Wade. We're gonna have to bring up that chart of spending because he's gonna have to like get a third job in order to pay off these uh, child support bills. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to pay like a hundred and twenty dollars for health insurance. Yeah, I I just I I like it's it's one thing like okay I, diving into someone's personal life is is like you know it's one thing and I don't want to go too deep but it's just like the fact that he, he has did. to make it a <laughs> got him. He, <laughs> <laughs> calm down. <laughs> the calm fact that calm he, down. The fact that he's making a public apology. It's it's just so strange because he the quote what he's apologizing for is like I misspoke and probably went into too much detail on Monday expressing my feelings and it felt like I was making some comparatives when talking about the passing of my son Zen and then also talking about the new child that I'm expecting. It's like I didn't need to do that because there are two completely separate moments of their life. They both deserve respect. And it's just like I get that and I understand that and that is like someone's private 
life. But also, holy shit. Like, they're, they're like, it's just like, I don't get how you don't understand that. Anyway. I don't either, but while your chat's shaking and crying, he was shaking and baking, you know? <clears throat> you got, got him, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Wade's just out here trying to roast, ignoring all the... I just dude, like sex jokes, guys. Yeah, personal Give me a drama. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> anyway, that was one. The other article I have here is, Suspect in Las Vegas crash said ghost of NASCAR driver told him to drive the wrong way. <clears throat> and you know what? I'm bringing this up because I believe him. Which NASCAR driver? That's a good question. Let's see if it's specified in the article. What was the uh, Gordon, Je Gordon Jeffries? Jeff Gordon Jeffries? Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon. Gordon Jeffries, famous NASCAR driver. Gordon <laughs> I Jeffries. Gordon, I knew it was was it Gordon Ramsay, but all I can think of was Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. He's definitely not NASCAR. Okay. Um, in court hearing Tuesday, his name is Asif, A S S E F F. Asif told the judge that the ghost of Dale Earnhardt told him uh -huh. to drive the wrong way on the freeway in order to get the mayor's attention and bring NASCAR back to Las Vegas. And to be honest, how can we prove this didn't occur? And the well, judge I mean? said, as if, and then sentenced him to prison. <laughs> God, you are on fire. <laughs> oh God, thank geez. you, thank you. I'll be here for as long as you guys don't ban me from the Discord. Uh, oh, I don't know God. if it helps or hurts his claim of the Dale Earnhardt ghost that it apparently... He had heroin and meth in his system at the time of the crash. And the ghost. Wait. No, no I'm not going to. And go. heroin, meth, and the ghost, the ghost of Dale of Earnhardt. Dale <laughs> in his blood. The perfect trio. Uh, yeah. What, what if. Okay. I don't know, man. I don't know if that's going to work. Hang I'm on. Not I got sure. to look up something because I got to look up. How did Dale Earnhardt die? Didn't he die in a NASCAR accident? Probably. Maybe he, he missed Earnhardt. what Dale Earnhardt was saying because Nick Cannon was fucking in his back seat. Okay. All right. Crossover. I like it. <laughs> Thank this you. Thank you. Okay. All yeah, right. Dale Earnhardt uh, had a horrible crash like back in the 90s. Right, right. So he 2001, crashed. but it's okay. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Late 90s. 2001 is basically late 90s. Mm -hmm. 2001 is basically 1997. Mm -hmm. I didn't what are numbers? I didn't even month. know NASCAR wasn't in Las Vegas. And I don't know why they would bring it back or to but there. But the Las the Vegas Motor Speedway, Is I that assume. A thing? All I know is about I think so. Indianapolis 500 or whatever. And there's horses in Kentucky. I don't know if that's NASCAR related, but there's horses. That down is, there. it is NASCAR related. The A in stands for horses. It's, it's <laughs> silent. It's a silent A. <laughs> oh, horses. horses. Oh, horses. Uh oh yeah, Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Look at that. That is a thing that exists. Um, good for that, I guess. Yep. All right. That, I, like, uh, like, my, the, the, I don't know which, one side of my brain is like, yeah, well, that's not going to work as a defense. But the other side of my brain is like, what if that does work? What if it does work? What if he sits on the stand and just talks and, and everyone in the courtroom is like, holy shit, he did hear from Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> Whatever he just said convinced me beyond a doubt. This man conven con convenes with the ghost of Dale Earnhardt, and Dale really did him dirty. We should bring Dale in here. Uh, <laughs> hey, I got you. Have a good really? <laughs> not liking this guy who was apparently on a drug cocktail while driving on the wrong side of the road. Mm. Can't imagine what's dislikable about him. Seems cool. Does a lot of drugs, so that's great. Yeah. We should give him two licenses. Did you have more articles, Mark, or I, were those? I have a few more, but also it's just like, it's one of those things where it starts to get into <laughs> iffy talk territory, because the next one I have, I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> okay. I think it's just funny to like conceptually think about this and also kind of sad. It's the one Iowa Republicans call for teachers to be monitored by cameras. And I just think that's oh. just such a fascinating through thread to a solution that doesn't make any sense you know the ends being watching what camera. your kids are being taught in school and yet just from a conceptual level let's say it did happen and you put this elaborate security system that allows any parent from anywhere in the world to view a live stream of that classroom you buy the cameras for it, the streaming equipment the infrastructure to do it 
all of this money going into simply watching these teachers quit right there on the job because that's all that would happen. <laughs> all this work to watch them literally give a middle finger to the camera and then walk off. Like, I guess that would is be this, interesting. Is this a sincere thing that's I happening? I don't know. Schools it's... need funding. Well, I've got an idea. What if we fund spying on the schools instead of buying them books? We put we some can't... of this military tech that we've put a lot of money into. We pay for it with more money and put it in the schools. Is school, schools come to the state legislature like, look, we need more state funding for, for food for the kids. The kids are eating terrible, unnutritious meals where we can yeah. only afford so. And then they're like, we don't have money for that. Some crazy ass state senator is like, we need cameras. We need $80 million for school cameras. And everyone is like, ooh, military grade cameras? Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, that is just the most dystopian shit I have heard today. Yeah, that's pretty dystopian. And it's just like, what is what is the means? And I know what the means is like, we want to make sure they're teaching them the right things. It's like, you did you pass school? Do you know the right things? Do you know anything? Like, I don't Yikes. know. Just, it's just so, so strange. And plus, that with all the online schools, you could just look over their shoulder, I guess. You know? Because they're on the They need more parents hovering over their stuff of their kids, making sure that they're doing their homework properly. So mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not an expert on this. And so this is just like a totally uninformed opinion, basically. It's generally uninformed. But it, you know what terrifies me about our country and what's allowed to happen in our country? Yeah. Kids, kids have to go to school, right? Like yeah. if you, if you have a child of school age, they're supposed to be in school. Mm -hmm. But you're allowed to homeschool your kids with no nothing with no check on that or anything you can just be like nah i'm gonna teach them at home mm -hmm. you what if you're an idiot or a psychopath <laughs> like there's not even like a thing of like all right well you have to if you want to teach your kid the seventh grade you have to pass these seventh grade tests to prove that you can uh, comprehend what you're supposed to be teaching your that's, child at home that's a there's great there's nothing point. like that there's, There's all these people point. who are just like, I don't want them teaching my kids racist theory at school. I'll teach you myself. You're not qualified to do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. You're not like, God, I don't even want the responsibility. I, I think I am a smart person. I'm like an intelligent enough. I totally could teach uh, up to a certain level. I think I could do, not that I would want to, because I don't have that in me it takes a lot of specific skills and des desires in the world to want to be a teacher but i don't think i should be left in charge of that even for my own kids they mm -hmm. should talk to someone else about that shit mm -hmm. i got my own biases i got my own blind spots of things that i, I think i know that i have no idea about or huge gaps and i don't want to be responsible for that that is a whole ass job that i don't need to do yeah. and there's people who are just allowed to do that you know, when you meet someone in the real world who's an adult and you're like, how are you an adult? Mm -hmm. Maybe they were homeschooled. I don't know. Because there are plenty of parents who homeschool their kids. And aside from the social limitations of not, not learning how to socialize in that setting and, and what that leads to, I feel like homeschool kids, that's probably a struggle, right? Mm -hmm. Learning how to socialize in a world where you grew up, where it's basically you and your parent and maybe your siblings all the time. Yeah. But I'm sure there are plenty of parents who are great at homeschooling their kids turn out to be very smart and it's it works out well but there's no way all of them do yeah like and i don't know what that percentage is but it's terrifying yeah how is that allowed i mean it takes five years of education to become like even an elementary school teacher i think it's the same requirement for any grade of teacher right i don't know the details but you have to be like licensed basically you have to have a degree and or a certain amount of education that maybe doesn't culminate in a degree and then yeah you have to be like you have to prove your skills and be licensed and approved by your state uh i don't know it's either your state or your county i don't know it's different but yeah there's a whole thing there's a process and you have to re-up that you have to continue to prove as the years go on like yeah i'm still teaching right mm -hmm. stuff i'm still doing the following the curriculum yeah i don't know man someone someone made a, a comment and it's the educational system is set up to make workers not smart smart people and i say that's a conclusion you could draw i say more school in the educational system is to make sure that everyone generally on average has a standard level of 
information. Not necessarily like, it doesn't teach you how to be smart. Nothing can really teach you how to be smart. That's something you just got to figure mm. out for yourself. Well, okay. You can, you can learn how to learn. You can, you can learn, learn how, how to, to learn. learn. Yeah, exactly. You learn how, does, to, how to do research. And, school but, does not but, yeah. teach you how to learn. I would I You would don't agree gain with that. intelligence from exactly. school. You sort of, you have yeah. the faculties you have, and some people, you know, have maybe limitations or whatever. Sure. And, and some people work on those, like, you can develop those as, like, skills of learning. Uh, but I did, like, to say it's set up to make workers is a bit of a paranoid way around it. And, yeah, you could draw that conclusion because there is a whole tracing back of, like, you need people that are like the reason cursive was taught and stuff like that you could trace back but i think it's more about like ensuring that the standard population the average level of like competency across the board is to a certain degree and i think like that is generally what you could boil education down to i mean the uh, the idea in our country i think this is again talking out my ass a little bit but it comes the the idea of a free public education comes from an idea that if we're going to be a democracy uh, the electorate needs to have a certain level of civic understanding and mm. general understanding of the world, right? Yeah. If we want the people to vote, the point of our form of government as it was created is that we want to trust that everyone will vote and they will vote in an informed way for what they think is the most important, uh, you know, candidates to represent the values. And the, But to do that, you need to understand some fundamental aspects of why our government is formed the way it is, what the three branches are responsible for, generally, just so mm -hmm. you can know, well, like, what, what am I electing? Who is a who is a senator? Why? Who is a House, you know, a, a Congress person? What are these things? So, like, yeah, it's not to make a worker necessarily. The At least the original idea was revolving around that of if you're going to be a voter, you should be not an idiot and understand some of these concepts, at least on a very basic level. Mm -hmm. I think that's shifted. If you watched political advertisements, they are not uh, geared toward people who are intelligent. I don't well, watch political advertisements. I yeah. How can you avoid don't them during election years everywhere you go? It's just I don't watch like, ads. that election sucks. Don't watch. So they want to take away your freedoms. They want to make you pay money. Ads. I don't watch anything that has ads on it, if yeah, I can no. help it. No. I don't watch ads on YouTube. Uh, I don't watch regular TV. Yeah. With And if I do, it's like recorded and I fast forward. I never watch an ad in my life anymore yeah. because... I, literally, ugh. when when uh, Tyler was over and we watched a football game, I watched more ads in that game than I've seen like in the entire year prior. Because I, yeah. I, got, I got YouTube Premium, I got Twitch Prime, like I've got all these different things. Like I make sure I don't see ads because I just don't want to. With the Olympics, the Olympics just started uh, two days ago or whatever. Mm. I watch more ads with the Olympics than I do in anything else because it's hard to catch. When you're fast forwarding a show, you can tell it's yeah. a hard cut between the. Mm. But the Olympics is kind of like it's mixed coverage of the studio or it's the th the event or whatever. It's so we actually do watch some ads when we watch that, but mm. generally, hey, Winter Olympics, you guys watching the. Winter Olympics? It's in China. I feel I, like it was have, just in China the other day, but it's I back in China. I have not. I have not. One of my favorite events is in the Winter Olympics, the biathlon. Mm. This is that one, encrypted? When it snows outside, two things spring to mind without question. Guns and skis. You're not going to quiz me on any of this with all my sports knowledge for my new sports podcast, Go My Favorite Sports Team? I can't believe you took that Brian Regan joke and in, and inexorably <laughs> connected it to a podcast. Now that's what I, I mean. I use that joke all the time. Mm -hmm. eh. Yep. Eh. Biathlon's a good. Anyway, what were we talking about? Oh, teachers. Yeah, don't put cameras in classrooms. That's stupid. Yeah. Yeah, and another controversial article. I guess we can we can either skip this one or talk about this one. But oh, uh, controversial. Pro life, pro it. choice. Where do you stand, guys? You want to talk about abortion? Uh... Oh, we should talk about our stance on the death penalty. You guys like oh, the okay. death penalty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> death penalty for minors. How about that? A 16 and a half year old commits a murder. <laughs> How quickly can we put? Okay, this again. Uh, any other articles, Mark? Are they do yeah, they continue Mark, to escalate in controversy, or do you, uh, you have a lighthearted one in there? Lighthearted? Those were lighthearted. What are you talking about? What <laughs> what's controversial about? What no, you're no, you're about? right. You're right. No, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, wait, you got a counterpoint to why about abortion you, on a charity you, stream? You, you pro cameras in classrooms? Is that what you're saying? 
someone is if there's one person who is then i am not even remotely shocked anymore because are you pro possible. tradition or pro, pro electronics what does that mean what does that mean i don't know it mean? just sounds controversial i liked it so are you, are you pro internet <laughs> are you pro social medias because if you are you know, hang out. Wait, the, here's a here's a comment that came up that I, I know they didn't mean to write it this way, but the way they wrote it, just I'll read it to you. <laughs> the new cancer discovery is good. Oh no. Wow. <laughs> Great God. Yeah. <laughs> like I get what you're trying to say, but you sound real pro cancer there, huh? Yeah, the, oh, in the man. in the fight against cancer, it sounds like they're on the side of cancer. <laughs> know, cancer right? definitely helps keep our doctors employed and making lots of money. Thank you, cancer. That would be oh, that's just like the most nefarious. What if there's secret pharma labs where like they have the labs where they're doing the research, trying to discover new drugs, but then they have a lab of guys who just like, I think I found a new form of cancer we can develop a drug for. Uh, we gotta, we gotta get this out. We gotta find cases, get this out there. This is gonna be great for us. This is an extremely lucrative form of cancer. <laughs> doctors uh, love it. Yuck. Click to find out why. <laughs> doctors, <laughs> doctors <laughs> love this form of cancer. <laughs> cancer hates this pill. Click uh, to find out why. Wait, the cancer I, she doesn't want you to know about. I, I got I got another one, guys. It's really, uh -huh, it's really, uh -huh. really happy and gonna make you smile. Uh huh. Uh huh. Great. Threats from QAnon conspiracists force Butterfly Sanctuary to close. <laughs> what? <laughs> threats? Threats against the Butterfly Sanctuary? Against the butterfly. butterfly I understand what they're going for. <laughs> Some QAnon person watched the Ash Kutcher movie and then started they just know, threatening this one butterfly. A butterfly's wings can throw like, their plans at I, you. I never, I never understood why you would want to breed hundreds and hundreds of butterflies, but I see it now. My God, I'm shaking and crying right now at this. I went to cast my vote in the last election. There were butterflies everywhere. You're changing everything. Yeah. What in God's flat earth are those butterflies doing over there? Got my size. What is QAnon? Is that like? Oh, oh no, my God. no! Don't even! No, don't no, even! No! 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 If you don't no, know what it is, no, we're not no. getting into that. Yeah, you right, shut up! You shut it's, up! I Boo. would say that the, the, the most succinct way I'm going to explain it without wanting to talk about it a single second more is that it's a, it's a bunch of conspiracy theory bullshit. Oh, okay. Well, we no, yeah, we I'll boil it down that. even worse. It's a 4chan joke gone wrong. That's literally what it yeah. is. What is yeah. a, Is that like a Reddit? Oh my God! Just, boo! <laughs> boo! Are you anti? Boo! Get out of here! Is that like a Tumblr? Boo! I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Get I'm sorry. out of you, old oh, I'm man! Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guys, uh, I used to ask Jeeves and it couldn't tell me what it was either. <laughs> what does ask Jeeves? <laughs> what does Jeeves up to these days? <laughs> And, oh, it's just ask.com. Ah, I don't oh, like seeing ask, this. Oh, right. I don't oh, like seeing this. Who's that fucking guy I asked? I don't know. Jeeves. Jeeves, I guess. I don't know. Oh! <laughs> anyway, that poor butterfly thing. Yeah, god dang. Well, at least they'll quit affecting us with an E. Thank you. Thank you for using the right version of that word. Thank You're you. welcome. I made sure not to, just for you. Oh, and that's all I got. That's all the news for today. That's, that's wait. all nope. the news. So the market cap yeah. is nope. too so the market cap is down. What the hell was that? <laughs> I went <laughs> search. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I had one that was like a closer, like a ba -da 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 -da. I don't know, it's gone. You get there, man. I only I have so many buttons. Oh, you got different banks, so, though. You gotta so go A, B, and C. You gotta try them. What the? What the? Shut up. Shut up. So, the, so, the, so, what is that? So, 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 I don't know so, what this is. So, the market, it won't. So, the, there's no stop on so, it. The, so, it's so, just. So, the, so, the, so, 
So what the is this? So Duh. the market cap is. I, I, I'm trying so to press the, the clear button. It's so not even clearing so it out. Market, so Stop. The market, so it doesn't the matter what else I put. So it's so not. So the market I'm literally. So I'm trying market, to delete so it or clear is, whatever it is. It's not so, stopping. So the market cap. What so, are so, you? So, 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 hang on, so, what? So, hang on. So, B, top so, left, so, play, so, stop. So, so, okay, the here's the crazy cap. thing about that. That button, if I go in my GoXLR, there's no sample for that oh one. There's no sample. No, there's no sample. For the button to press. It's no sample. There's nothing oh, in shit. my bank oh my for God. that. <laughs> there's the no. Cap. There's none. What is that? Oh God. Oh, we are shaking and crying right I'm now. Oh, I know what that right is. Now, guys. Hang on. Yeah, wait, is wait. I know what that is. One six eight trillion dollars. And now the Oh! Ow! Oh, it went to zero. zero. It was the screen. That's the screen. Oh, that's the screen. So it was me. That's that's crazy. Cause then my GoXLR is on the fritz. Cause that that is not in the bank. That must have just randomly blasted out for some reason. What the fuck? <laughs> that's it. It was me the whole time. That's my joke, but that's what? Okay. Oh, oh my man. god, how is that happening? I don't understand. I have no idea. It's so, like so the market cap. So so the mark so the market cap <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, anyway. That's oh, all the man, news for god. today. Okay. Dun, ba -dun, dun. Bam. I don't have a stinger. So, so Raising money so, for the so the market cap, so we're raising money for the Winwoods Educational Foundation. Uh, you should donate. Check out the donate link. It's like uh, down beneath the stream, or it's maybe there's a command, probably like exclamation point donate or charity or who knows. You should uh, you should donate though. Wasn't great... Mark's bullshit at least worth a dollar of your time toward this great cause? I need a you need to donate because my stomach hurts. And I feel like I might throw up from that. That's a lot of laughing all at once, Mark. If you're shaking and crying right now, I donate a couple dollars toward this I'm great cause. Shaking and crying right now, bro. We are shaking and crying right now. <sighs> Listen, this is a good cause. It's tangible help, helping people get education, uh, doing a great service. I am going to donate again. If you guys would like to join me, feel free. How often can you say you donated with Markiplier to I'm save a school? I'm, I'm talking to you guys. Or to help guys. a school. I'm, I'm talking to you to, guys. To save the world. Hey, I Manny had uh, our back on the first one. Technically, she donated a thousand and one dollars. Oh, so. I got you. All right. Okay, all right. I see. I see. I see. Okay. All right. I get you. So. You okay, Bob? I you, that. Her, I hurt, man. <laughs> God. That's how I laughed during uh, your, the last Distractable recording. I laughed the oh, same. Legitimately, good. yeah. Hooray. Just, as, just as painful. I, I couldn't yeah. hear it because of the uh, n never ending sadness inside of me. <laughs> it's very good. I mean, when, when oh, that episode man. comes out, we, we also do have to record more Distractable, but I will be here Tuesday, so we should be able to record more. I, I think we have some new merch on the works over there, too. We do. Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta send you guys. Did I send you guys the link? I sent you guys the link. I think we should do the tie dye one, without giving too much away. I think we should do that one because it looks dope. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll have to check the market cap. Ah, <laughs> uh. <sighs> make sure you donate to increase the market cap, chat. There we go. We've gone up six hundred dollars. Way to go. Keep it up. Thank you for donating again as well, Mark. You're welcome, of course. Be happy appreciate. to help. Just like everyone here is happy to help, and, and there we're actually quite close to the goal. If you do the math, we're less than forty-five hundred dollars away from this goal. In my stream, Which, there's yeah, sixteen thousand six hundred people here. That's if everyone collective. donated a dollar. We're like almost double it. Less, in a moment. If people just donated a quarter, 
That's that true. That'll get us to the goal. We're very close. Why not? <sighs> Math. Hey, hey, just a dollar. Just one dollar. Doesn't need to be anything more than a dollar. If you haven't donated the stream yet, give it a chance right now. There's a link being posted in the chat. Goes to Tiltify. We don't get any of it. We get nothing of it. I've donated to the cause myself. Take the time to do it now. It's a great cause. You'll help out. People get education in the Winton Woods Educational Foundation. And you'll feel good because it's just a dollar. Find some change in the couch. If you were going to add cheese to a to a takeout meal, just don't add cheese this week. And then there you go. There's Boom. your dollar. Found it. Just Boom. one dollar. Just one, one dollar. If you were going to get like a McChicken, uh, don't eat instead. Mm -hmm. Just forego an entire... Well, you probably shouldn't forego meals. If you were going to get four... <laughs> if you were going to get four McChickens for a meal, uh -huh. just get three McChickens. Trust me, I've been there. It's you know, enough. I, I don't think a McChicken is a dollar anymore. Uh, that's a California thing. I think on the in the normal middle of the country areas, it's still pretty cheap. Whoa, Maybe it's not a dollar. If but. you were gonna get a McFlurry, the machine's gonna be broken anyway. Might as well spend your dollar here. McFlurry's like yeah. like three bucks. Well, then spend yeah, your well, three then bucks here. You only have to donate one of your three bucks, and you got two bucks left. You could go buy some candy bars or something. And the candy bar machine ain't never broke. Not that's like that true. scam McDonald's stuff. Let's see. Let's see. By Let's the see. way, today's episode is sponsored by McDonald's. It is not. We wish oh. it was. But it's not. Because today's episode is not sponsored at all. Hey, look at this. There's so many people giving a dollar. Are you guys seeing this? Look at this? these dollars. Look yeah, at these look dollars. At oh look my at God. these dollars. The ticker oh. go. That's Ooh, really it's going. Good now that's good. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to do that. There's still a chance. If you're on the fence, it's just a dollar. It's just it dollar. is. It's just one. There's a two. $1. There's a five dollar. Five dollar. That's too much. There's a two dollar. It's one. double. One dollar. Oh, apparently $1 it's one twenty nine. Apparently a McChicken is one twenty nine. Oh that, man, the, the dollar times menu we live in. From any fast food place, a dollar menu on anyone that got me through college. <laughs> that legitimately yeah. a, McD a McDouble McChicken. Uh, the the junior. What is it? Wendy's. The junior. Junior, junior baked cheeseburger. Junior JBC cheeseburger. baby. Yeah, that one. Uh, there was one at Burger King, but I, I didn't like it. It was not very good. Uh, there was, uh, fish tacos at Long John Silver's were a dollar for a while there. That was really good. Anyway, just one dollar. One dollar. We legitimately just went up like 1,500 bucks from one dollar donation. That's all it takes. It's That's true. all it is. All it it's takes true. is you guys taking the time to do it. You know, they take PayPal, you know, Apple Pay. I'm sure some Google Pay thing, whatever they got, whatever you got. Just one dollar. We're not asking for anything more than a dollar. Just one. And we're already almost... Whoa, my God. 18409 So close. Wow, wow, really? We yeah. were at fourteen six before we started talking about this. Yeah, what just happened? Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of money just went up all at once. Look at this. Was, was there a big one we missed? I don't know. We might have, but this is I the power of I can't tell because dollars. there's so many one dollars, it's hard to keep up. I think it's mostly just people donating one dollar at a time, and that's really what it can do. That's all it takes. Just one dollar. There are some people that are donating more, and we're very grateful for that. And thank you very much. You're covering people that can't even give a dollar. And we understand that there are some people that can't even give one dollar. We get it. But it's a good cause. We're almost to the goal. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Look at, Look that. at it go. Look at My it go. computer cannot keep up with what's happening. Oh, that's pretty impressive. It's trying to load, and it's all... <laughs> I just am amazed at watching this... Just that that single digit, the way it's flying around, is mm -hmm. insane to keep up with. It's Thank beautiful. You. Thank you very much, everyone. Watching. We're now Thank over nineteen thousand so dollars. We're under a thousand, under nine hundred dollars, uh, under eight hundred dollars to the mm -hmm. goal. About to hit goal. Mm -hmm. This is what it means. Thank it you. is absolutely cruising right now. I I'm looking at I don't know why, but I'm looking at McDonald's dollar menu, and I think the only thing is like what they call a sausage McMuffin, which is just so sad without the egg. And I'm just like, oh, oh whoa, I like a sausage McMuffin. It's kind of like the egg. egg. It's kind of like the egg. biscuit. No, you just eat sausage and cheese. Egg is for nerds. Eggs, but, well, there's so much nutrition in an egg. What are you talking about? Nah, eggs are for nerds. We're at exactly $19,800.01 right now. Okay, well, that's, okay, hey. well, someone just finished the goal. Wow. Damn, that's all it takes? That's all it takes. Thank you. Everyone. Wow. Yeah, holy moly. See, everyone's always like, people come in and like, whenever I'm just streaming normally and someone like, 
I don't know, they'll cheer like a dollar or something, they'll cheer like a hundred bits and they're like, man, I'm sorry, I can't give more. And it's like, no, 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 honestly, every little bit makes a huge difference. One person donating like $500 is amazing, but y'all just donated over five grand in like three minutes, one dollar at a time. That's mm -hmm. the power of a community. That's really good. It is. It's fantastic. Okay, you you have to admit the sausage biscuit is sad. It's not even cheese. No, it's good. It's, I like the sausage just, biscuit. Well, like you like burgers team. plain. You're weird. Oh I like no, I'm on, on my burgers team. first of all. Uh, just uh, biscuit in a. I like the sausage and cheese McMuffin as listen, well, but I also like the sausage biscuit sometimes. Listen, listen. listen. Egg. They're both good. Eggs one of the most healthy thing because it has a complete. It's a complete protein source. Uh -huh. I'm not saying meat's uh -huh. not, but who Baby knows how chicken that you're eating that. raw, like undeveloped. It's a, it's a, a whole a baby. Sack of, no, it's not. It's a whole it, baby. It ain't eating. fertilized, Wade. If you're eating fertilized eggs, you're doing something oh, it's really fertilized wrong. fertilized before I eat it. <laughs> Nick Cannon got to it. Uh. <laughs> in fact, my one egg turned into four right in front of me. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Nick Cannon's going to have to issue an apology to chickens everywhere for that one. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Uh, well, congratulations, Bob, on uh, getting the goal. Yeah, thank you. Mm hmm Good work, gentlemen. Uh, yes, well done, well done. <sighs> All right, well, now we oh, leave, right? Now wait, you know what? There was another poll. Gosh darn it. <gasps> there was another poll. I'm an idiot. I was going to do open a poll so people could vote on who wins, because we do that on Distractable Now, where oh. someone wins. Right. Yeah. Who's the host? Ah, gosh okay. darn. You well, can, you can, we can all win. We're make a, all no, make a straw poll. Make a straw poll. Yeah, I want to lose poll? again, just like I yeah. do on the subreddit. All right, now, everyone, as Bob's making this poll, really think. You got to have your own point system. Don't copy anyone else's. Your criteria for who got the most points throughout it. I know all of you were keeping track through the whole show. You were writing down who exactly the moments, when, where, and what happened. Now, think of it very clearly. Who contributed the best stories? Who told the funniest jokes? Who was the most handsome? Uh, any criteria. Who's the only one not streaming this? Uh, wow. I thought you were streaming yeah. it. He ain't. What? No, I promoted it and had everyone going Bob's way today. He ain't even there. All right, there you go, lads. A link. Oh. All right, I'm going to... A link in the decord. Okay, straw pull coming in, hot and heavy. All right. Well, I looked at the results, and so far, I see one vote. It was my vote. Oh, there we go. Isn't there a way to pin things to the top of Twitch when in when I chat? I think YouTube. Probably. Can I, I can it? do that on Facebook. Isn't there a way to pin things? Oh, uh, I could do that on Facebook when my chat doesn't break. I'm saying... Mods, did it work? Stop. Please there stop voting for me. I don't deserve to win. I, I'm not even streaming. I'm in the top three right now. That's crazy. <laughs> that's so crazy, dude. <laughs> well, I voted for myself, so that's pretty good. Uh, no, I voted for you, Bob. Well, there's, there's okay, only, I'm looking. I'm looking. <clears throat> only like 1,500 votes right now. Well, that's bad math. So, 1,800. Oh, that's, God. That shows you. you went to strawpoll.com? I don't know. What? Is there a different uh, one? What's the other one? Oh, I think it's strawpoll.me. Who oh, cares? Strawpoll.gov? Oh, this guy with strawpoll.com over here. Blah. I'm oh, sorry. Is, my vote after is it not it working? Oh, is it not boy. functioning? I'm sorry. Ooh. This guy here. This guy. <laughs> Listen. Shut up. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Not I'm trying that. to vote for my alternate accounts, and it's saying I already voted. I don't like. I don't like this dot com. It seems more legit than usual. You're just mad because you're losing. What? No, it's I'm winning. It's golf rules. VPN users can't vote. That's too <laughs> bad. <Damn it. laughs> That's what you get for. Guess you shouldn't the have secret internets, then, huh? Mm-hmm. You tell you. You better share your porn with the rest of the world. <laughs> All right, how long Wait, I thought you said you were winning. I don't know. No, he said he was top three. Oh, okay. It's not really tightening up. 
I don't know what to tell you. Oh no, it's it's so it. I'm. Mm. It seems seems like everyone's in agreement. Wait, do you want to announce the winner? Up. Did you say it? It didn't come through on my end. <clears throat> Bob. Oh, okay. Wow. Ah, unbelievable. Hmm. Mark, how do you feel about that? I feel it was fair. Um, I got nothing to say. I tried my best. Uh, sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it don't. And I think just you today it didn't go my way. You guys might have the majority going your two's way, but I just want you to know, of the three of us, I got less than 18% of the vote. And uh, feels good, man. Feels good. Yeah, there's a poll on the subreddit about which of us is the funniest, and I, I'm in last place on that, too. But, like, five people underneath the poll respond, and they're all like, Oh, come on! Wait! Go, give way to chance! <laughs> so all five I, people that voted for me also typed comments to defend my <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> you, you may not have the most supporters, but you have the most vehement supporters. I do. Mm. I have the most vocal people that are wrong on my side. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all right. I guess well. we're about at four hours, huh? Yeah. yeah. Self esteem is at an all time high. Let's do this. What's next? Listen. Who's the baldest? Can we do a poll for that? I mean, we could. I don't. I don't feel like that's an opinion based one. I think that's really more of a, you know, photographical evidence type question. Wait, what did you ask? Who's, Who, who's the baldest? Ah, it's not. I could, need to win anything, guys. I don't. I don't care about winning. It's not about who wins. It's about who comes in first. You know. Right. That's fair. Uh, yeah. So I, congratulations, I, I, I Bob. I respect that. Bob, right. well done. Well, well, you know won. what? You know what? You know who the real winner is today? Hmm. Winton Woods. Kids. I mean, yeah, sort of specifically, kids, students in the Winton Woods City Schools hmm. District. Uh, but like in general, kids, chat. I hope that you had fun today, but I also hope that you uh, concern yourself with the state of education in this country. Mm -hmm. I hope that if you donated, that's fantastic. Thank you for the support. But I hope if you have kids who are in school, uh, you get involved. I know everyone's busy, and I'm sure it, you may not even have time, an extra minute to do that. But anything you can do, volunteering, uh, offering support to a teacher, even just like volunteering to go on field trips, anything. Teachers are scrambling to get every last grant, dollar, uh, extra outside funding, uh, uh, ways to get resources and supplies. Teachers are scratching and scrambling and fighting to get every little bit of resource they can get uh, because their job is really important, but no one treats it like it is, especially not the people who decide how much money they get. Mm -hmm. um, so things like this exist around the nation. I know this existed in my district. I'm sure it exists in, in your student's district or in your community. Just get, just do what you can, get involved, help, help improve education because Lord knows we could use some more well-rounded, uh, smart, thoughtful people in the world. And uh, good education is a huge part of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, thank you for watching, donating. I don't know if you guys have any final statements or anything. No, you yeah. said it well. Yeah, just be involved with your communities. You know, that the world that goes on around you keeps going. <laughs> so why not be a part of it and steer it a little bit? What they said, only slightly better. Okay, damn, he's so good with words. Wow, wow, I can't believe you just outshine Mark like that so yeah, casually. I didn't mean to, yeah. it's just whenever I open my mouth, uh, gold records pop out, you know? I get it, man, I get it. I wish I got it. Alright, well, shall we, uh, how do we, how does this end? How do you end a stream? I think we shake it dry. Shake it, uh... Right I don't want to. I don't want to get TOS'd. I don't want to get. I don't want to get banned. Okay, I can't. I'm not big enough that that helps me. I'm small enough that getting <laughs> banned from my platform hurts me still. So I'm not. I'm not in for that. You guys do it. Well, you're not even streaming, Wade. You don't care. You just go eat your Wendy's or whatever you got waiting for you. No, but it turns uh, out I still got DMCA'd for this somehow. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say thanks to Mark and Wade. Um, I instigated this. I asked you guys to do this. And I appreciate you showing up. This is really a cause that I picked. And uh, obviously, like I said, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law worked for this district for a long time. And uh, so it's, it's I, mean, I have a connection to the district 
Uh, and you guys don't, but you showed up anyway because you're good friends. So thanks so much for doing this with me and uh, donating generously and supporting a great cause. Mm. Anytime. Oh, I, it was fun. Yeah, it was great. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for putting this together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks for helping my sister's school, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, apparently. That was the real secret. It's all a sham. Wade was like, hey... <laughs> You funnel. Can you can you launder some money into my sister's classroom for me? It's just big. No, uh, I'm gonna end my stream then and uh, I'll raid somebody. Great, I'm gonna go live. Thanks, guys. Right. Have a great <laughs> afternoon or evening, everybody. All right, you too. Bye. 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 Hey, listen, I was supposed to do a promotion for the podcast that i have not distractible i have another one i was talking about it well i wasn't actually joking about that i literally was supposed to do uh like a promotion for it and um uh die it's in the works tyler and i we filmed something if you didn't know tyler and i we have a new podcast called go my favorite sports team L link is not in the description anywhere but it exists right okay cool i didn't have something ready because I was wandering in the woods uh, filming the the cloak thing and so I didn't get around to it that came out on Thursday new episodes on Thursdays so I don't know you're gonna have to google it because I don't have a link for it it's called go my favorite sports team available on Spotify and other places so it exists Tyler is very mad at me. He's. I told him that I was going to, like, the day the the episode came out. I talked about it before it came out, and I was like leading up to it, and I was just all like, "Oh yeah, hundred percent. I'm gonna be ready on the day." And then the day came, and I, I look, I wasn't ready. So, but I'm getting to it because yesterday we recorded something together for a video, and I haven't edited it yet. But it's because I was here. See, okay, so it's not that I forgot I was busy, right? I was busy doing other things, right? It's a good, it's a really good podcast. See, it's not for people that like sports, except kind of. It's for people like me who don't like sports. So it's Tyler who knows sports really well, explaining sports to me who does not know sports very well. And I don't, I'm, it's, it's one, it's the few areas where I'm very stupid, I'm normally a smart guy, you know. I'm normally pretty clever and smart. I don't know sports at all, so I'm pretty dumb when it comes to sports. Anyway, we're not making fun of sports at all. It's not like a oh ha ha sport ball. I'm really trying, but my brain just don't get it. So if that sounds like the conversation for you, you want to try this podcast because you're going to learn at the same rate that I do. If you don't know sports at all like me, you are basically me. I will have a better promo at a later date. you got to have to Google it. Go my favorite sports. There, look, my mods. They're better than me. As I don't know what I'm doing most of the time that I'm doing anything, guys. I I literally don't know anything about nothing. And so me not knowing nothing about anything means that it that I sometimes get behind the smorts. Yeah, to tweet. Tweet at Tyler that you definitely checked out the podcast and it was so, so, so good. That would help. That would go a long way. If you can just tweet at Tyler that you definitely listened to the podcast and it was so, so, so good. That would go a long way. Stop tweet before that last bit. You don't put more in the tweet after that. It's I definitely listened to the podcast and it was so, so, so good. Stop. And that's it. That's all done. Okay. If he is convinced that I definitely promoted it, he won't be mad at me. Okay. And I don't want him mad at me. Okay. Cool. Just tweet at him. You definitely, all caps, listen to the podcast. And it was so, so, so good. End. Stop. Done. Okay. Cool. Great. Cool. I'm going to go now. Have a good day. I'm good at being an internet person. <laughs>